We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound oh good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. Mark, you need to play the rest of that Charlemagne the God clip because basically the way you cut it off makes it sound like you're hiding something derogatory that he said afterwards. So play the rest of the clip or I probably just won't listen to you anymore because you're no better than a liberal. Oh, I'm fighting words, right? No better than a liberal. I'm fighting wow. words. Everything's better than a than a liberal. Anyway, we, uh, you know, what? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't play the rest of the Charlemagne the God clip, but I'll be honest with you. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not hiding everything. I am an open book. I tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth uh so help me god for for example i will begin today's show by letting you know that one of the members of my staff already has two big strikes against her against them sorry i didn't want to i didn't want to pin well i guess the cat's out of the bag now hannah has started the show show's only 30 (laughs) seconds old she already has two big strikes against her what the first strike is that uh we all we all agreed to come Dad, wearing don't you our, dare we all agreed to uh, come to, we we're gonna wear our same shirts on the stream today our remember mar-a-lago merch which is available exclusively at markkshop.com this is the i have the white hoodie on jay has the heather gray t-shirt uh hannah has at, the mauve she has the mauve hoodie also i got her husband a little hat yeah which he wears is, it every day he wears it every day and i said okay today Hey guys, what we'll do is we'll all wear Remember Mar-a-Lago stuff on the stream to promote the new line of apparel. And Jay showed up wearing his t-shirt. I showed up wearing my hoodie. Hannah, describe your outfit to everybody. Before I do that, yes. I have a question. Yes. Uh, are your are your legs feeling warm? Are my legs feeling warm? Yeah. Why? Because your pants are on fire right now because you're being a big fat liar. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. Anyone can tune into the stream that see the, and see that one of these three well, things is, is not correct, like the other. That is correct, but it's because you and Jay must have a little texty text with each other where you guys decided that you were wearing them and then didn't clue me no, in. No, it's not a conspiracy or anything. It's not a, that's right. It's not Thursday, Hannah. Save that for tinfoil hat day. It's you Tuesday. You guys didn't tell me. I love to match. You know I love matching. I mean, usually you do, so I was a little shocked. That was, uh, that was strike number one. By by the way, if you would like some Remember Mar-a-Lago gear like Jay and I are wearing, uh-huh. then uh, definitely visit markkshop.com. That was the first strike. Then immediately before the show, we were listening to the news, and they were talking about Hurricane, what's her name, Irene or Fiona? Fiona. Fiona. And Hannah goes, man, I really am in the mood for a hurricane. <laughs> And at first, I thought she meant the tasty alcoholic <laughs> beverage made popular by uh, made popular by Jimmy Buffett and Alan Jackson in their song Five O'clock Somewhere." <laughs> but no, she meant an actual. I go, "What do you mean?" She goes, "You know, I just love a hurricane sitting at home. Power goes out. Sound of the generator in the background. I could use a good hurricane." <laughs> okay, but in our defense, Jacksonville never gets really hit. Well, so, like when when we quote unquote get hit, it's like the outer bands where it doesn't really do much damage i mean it does enough i th- I, I quickly scolded her because not only is there the devastation to our beautiful coastline not only is there the financial uh you know the financial loss and of course the tragic loss of life and limb well, yeah but probably the worst thing that happens in a hurricane is that all the radio stations play weather 24 7 and you don't get to hear the mark K show well what do you want me to wish for i'm used to having snow days in washington we don't have any of those fun things here why don't you just wish for everything to just be normal and sunny all the time like yeah. florida always is. oh blah blah boo bad good weather in the mark k show blah <laughs> what could be worse that's two i'm just saying i'm just letting you know <laughs> i don't going have any into more the, strikes left going there's two you have one more so there's three hours hopefully you can get through um <sighs> totally that's un- a long time it sure it sure is <laughs> 855-940 mark is our number 855-940-6275 thanks so much for joining us today folks we really appreciate it man there's so much we got to get to there's ron DeSantis news again uh, people in texas one particular sheriff is investigating ron DeSantis for criminal behavior after he flew immigrants to uh flew immigrants to martha's vineyard in, in massachusetts a sanctuary state and left them there um of course there's no actual laws that seem to have been broken but we'll get you more on that story in this ridiculous sheriff from texas whose feelings were hurt and who is also i believe trying to make a political play for himself 
off of the coattails of uh, Super Governor, Governor Ron DeSantis. Also, also Don Lemon. We spoke about how Don Lemon got demoted the other day, how he's being moved off of night to the morning show, and they're they're teaming up with these two other women, and how everyone's supposedly really excited about it over at CNN. But really, it's it's a huge demotion, and it's probably. It's probably the beginning of the end for Don Lemon. I really, truly believe that the only reason Don Lemon wasn't fired the way that Brian Stelter was is because Don Lemon is gay and Don Lemon is black and the suits at CNN didn't need any more uh, lawyers breathing down their necks. So whatever time is left on his contract, he'll be living out probably on this new and improved Don Lemon morning show that everyone's excited about. Well, we have some actual proof as to why Don Lemon may have been demoted because it seems like he's not really capable of you know doing his job anymore and uh we'll get you that clip in just a minute plus joe biden man when this guy puts his foot in his mouth he puts it all the way down there he opens up his mouth wide he, sho he shoves both of them in and he doesn't care he doesn't care who knows it after joe biden went on 60 minutes this past weekend and said this the pandemic is over the pandemic is over everybody and their mother went on television and on the uh, news shows and on twitter to point out that joe biden is actually wrong the pandemic isn't over if you notice no one's wearing masks everybody seems to be in pretty good shape yeah so well you know we're just going to declare this pandemic over dr fauci you remember him he was probably the biggest uh, name that they got out there immediately like yesterday I mean, this whole this clip on on 60 Minutes where Scott Pelley was talking to to uh, Joe Biden and Joe Biden says the pandemic's over. The pandemic in, is over. Dr. Fauci, he must like the the bat phone, the Fauci phone must have been ringing off the hook. You know, like the big red phone with the it's a big red phone, no dial. It just rings. It's the hotline. He's like Fauci here. What did he say? Oh God, shut that guy. All right, I'll get ready for the news shows tomorrow. And then yesterday, here's what he said to walk back the president's comments. We are not where we need to be if we're going to be able to, quote, live with the virus, because we know we're not going to eradicate it. We only did that with one virus, which is smallpox. And that was very different. That was very different. We're, we're not where we need to be. So Joe Biden says, look, everybody's healthy. If you notice, no one's wearing masks. Everybody seems to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, so the pandemic must be over. The pandemic is over. Oh, but Dr. Fauci's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Do not listen to the old man on the television. Listen to me, the other old man on the television. We are not where we need to be with COVID. For example, there's an election coming up in 49 days. If the pandemic is over, then people might actually go out to the polls instead of staying at home waiting for their mail-in ballots. If the pandemic is over, then a lot of states and municipalities and places like that may pull the, uh, the early voting windows uh, because the pandemic's over. There's no concern anymore. There's a lot of things that the pandemic created that can now be uncreated because Joe Biden has declared the pandemic to be over. One of those things, by the way, is his own student loan repayment plan. Do you remember this whole student loan repayment plan? Yes, yeah, I didn't you, know if that was rhetorical. Or no, that was not a rhetorical. That's like, but yes, I appreciate I you waiting. That. I appreciate you waiting for confirmation. Thank you. That was not. That was very good. Uh, you still have two strikes, though. The Joe Biden student loan repayment plan was going to be ten thousand dollars or more, depending on you know how much you got beforehand and if you got a Pell Grant and all these other things that he was going to repay to students who were not even having trouble repaying their loans, just had the outstanding loans. And it was a big to-do because everyone was saying, well, does he even have the power and authority to do this? Nancy Pelosi said a couple of years ago, you, you can't actually do this as president. But then when Joe Biden decided to do it to buy some votes for the midterms, she changed her tune and said, oh, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. And actually, you do. The president does have the authority to do this. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's start writing out more checks to try to get more support in the midterms. And when Corinne Jean-Pierre was pressed about this in the White House press briefing, uh, she uttered the um, she uttered this new line of information saying that the reason that Joe Biden can forgive these loans based on financial harms caused by COVID-19 is because of the HERO Act. That's right. The HERO Act gave unprecedented presidential powers to Joe Biden because of COVID. We, it was a national emergency. It was a pandemic. And in a pandemic, the government has to take serious, serious action. So it's for everybody's safety. It's for the benefit of all Americans. It's a national health crisis for crying out loud, folks. Give Joe Biden whatever power he wants. Not that he needs, but that he wants. And President Joe Biden used that power 
He said, using the HEROES Act, a law passed after the 9-11 terrorist attacks, by the way, uh, to demand the Secretary of Education to provide relief from student loan payments during times of war or national emergency. Well, Joe Biden took that to a whole new level. It's a national emergency. It's a pandemic. We are going to use this HEROES Act, and we are going to forgive all these debt payments from all of these students who we hope are going to vote for Democrats in November, and uh, we're going to do it with the authority that we gave, well, ourselves. Well, that was then. This is now. Yesterday, Joe Biden declared... The pandemic is over. The pandemic is over, and he did it on national television, and that clip went viral, and it's everywhere, and now everybody knows that Joe Biden said the pandemic is over. Well, if the pandemic is over... Isn't the national emergency also over? If the pandemic is over, is there no longer a, a significant health threat to the United States of America and to her citizens? Isn't it, isn't it no longer necessary for the president to have these very special powers that have been reserved for times of crises? There's no more crises. The pandemic is over. And we know that because Joe Biden said so. The pandemic is over. And now so is potentially this great big student loan repayment plan that the Democrats were all thrilled about. This thing that he's been trying to do for God, since he got into office. He promised this as a campaign promise before he even got to the White House that he was going to repay student loan payments and people are going to get more money that these uh, these abhorrent college loans were going to be subsidized now, now by the federal government and he finally figured out a way to do it and man elizabeth warren was jumping for joy and bernie sanders was so excited and aoc was like well finally he did something right he must want to date me and now all of a sudden joe biden by declaring the pandemic is over has basically given republicans and the courts and the states and everybody else who is fighting this ridiculous mandate in court who's fighting this ridiculous repayment program for no reason other than to garner su uh, support for Democrats in the midterm elections and beyond, he's given them all the evidence they need because they can just walk into court and say, uh, yes, Your Honor, Joe Biden claims that because we're in a pandemic, he can use the HEROES Act to repay these student loans. However, Joe Biden on, the, on uh, September the 18th on a, an episode of 60 Minutes declared that the pandemic was over. We have the clip right here if you haven't yet seen it. The pandemic is over. There you are. The, uh, the prosecution rests. And then the court, <laughs> then the judge is going to look at the defense and say, all right, uh, lawyer for the Biden administration, do you have anything? And the defense attorney is going to be like, oh, I got I got nothing. Here's my resume. Are you looking for I'm looking for work because I can't work for this this clown anymore. Uh, so that's what Joe Biden did. He opened up his mouth. He stuck his big foot in it. And in doing so, he has taken away the largest power that he's given himself. He's taken away one of the biggest tools that I mean, aside from himself being a big tool, he's taken away one of the biggest tools that he had, that the Democrats had, that the administration had to control the public. Vaccine mandates for the military. We're in a pandemic. Let's fire teachers and, and firefighters and police officers in New York City that don't, don't want to get vaccinated. We should do that. It's a pandemic. Forcing people to wear masks and get vaccinations and boosters. And, you know, if you want to go on federal property, you've got to be, you've got to be sufficiently ju juiced up with our, with our government-mandated vaccines. That is, of course, until the pandemic's over, which Joe Biden has just inadvertently declared over. I mean, and he's got great proof. If you notice, no one's wearing masks. Everybody seems to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, there you go. So let's just call the pandemic over. Man, Chuck, Dr. Fauci, you know that guy's thinking, why did I wait till December to retire? Why didn't I just give my two weeks notice? Oh, yeah, I got to sell that book at Christmas. I got that book coming out in November, and I want it to be a bestseller for Christmas. All right, well... I'll stay through December. Little did he know that he was going to have to go on television Monday morning and walk back the president of the United States, who for years has been telling us that we're in the middle of a once in a century pandemic, that we've got to stay the course, that we've got to get vaccinated and wear masks and get boosted and that it's we're a long way home and everybody can't go to work unless you're vaccinated, can't go to school unless you're vaccinated. And now all of a sudden in one fell swoop, the pandemic is over because Joe Biden wanted to show off at the Detroit Auto Show. Joe Biden wanted to go to the Detroit Auto Show and drive that Corvette. Man, he wanted to rev that Corvette's engine. And the only way he could do so was to walk around with Scott Pelley and tell everybody, hey, pandemic's over, folks.
<laughs> Sorry, folks. Pandemic's over. Moose out front should have told you. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-MARK is our number. We have so much more to get to. Like I said, I will play, I'll play you that Charlemagne the God clip, the whole one, just to show you I ain't hiding nothing. And also, uh, we do have some information about Ron DeSantis, plus... The, uh, but the primary candidates for the Republican nomination in 2024, they are starting to line up, which is good news and bad news for, well, the Republican primary candidates in 2024. All that, uh, how dumb are they? Well, what do we else do we have today on Tuesday? Trivia, American Trivia Warrior? Yeah. Right, Hannah? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. And uh, maybe we'll do some of Hannah's hot takes, too, uh, because it is Tuesday, and that's something, that's something we like to do. Quick break, folks. More Mark K Show coming up right after this. Yeah. People are uh, not enjoying that your hat is somewhat sideways. What do you mean? It's like not completely centered. Oh, so you want it like more sideways? No, I mean, I don't care. Like this? Do whatever you want. I'm telling yo, you. Yo, yo, my hat is on crooked. That's the way it looked when I looked up at the camera. Hmm. No? All right, Michael. Is this better? Uh, did they want it straight or more crooked? Straighter. <laughs> there better? you go. That works. Is that better? <laughs> I guess take it off. Why is everyone saying I seem mad? Why do you seem mad, Hannah? I don't know. Oh, maybe because you have two strikes against you. Maybe. I guess. <laughs> Hugh Crespin says Mark's hat is never on straight. <laughs> All right. That is right. I found this random packet of salt on my desk, and I don't know where it came from. Oh, probably uh, the mines? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. The salt mines? Probs, bubs. Here I am. Rock me like a hurricane. That's what I was singing this morning. Jay, you put your hat on correctly this instant, says No, Jay. sir, Jay. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I just sir. looked at you, Jay. That was great. We'll see how this works. Here I am. Rock me like a hurricane. Okay, so Casey and I are almost done with um, Stranger Things. It's been really good. Hey, when does the next uh, Outer Banks season come out? Uh, like two years. Wait, are you serious? It's that long? I think so. Yeah, 2020. What's today? 2022? Yeah. I think 2024. Are you serious? What? Don't look at me. Uh, I don't know. Google it. I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Um, Chase, that guy. Um, Chase. Chase. Chase is his real name. Oh, his real I think, name, right? John B. Yeah, because Chase is his real name. Right. Um, he's already almost thirty. Yeah. I mean, that's time flies when you're. I know. Time. Okay. Outer Banks season three is is. Brrr. Confirmed December 2022 release date. Oh, Ooh. wait, but this is not. Wait, what? There's no way. It, it says this is not confirmed. It says confirmed, and then it says not confirmed. That's not true. It's not coming out in December. No. That, that's for sure. What are you looking on? Uh, I'm checking different ones now. Look at IMDb. What's do you have IMDb up right now? Does it say something? Jay, what do you see? Yeah, what's, what do you what's see? your investigative reporting tell us? Outer Banks. Mm hmm. The internet would move a little bit quicker. Outer Good Banks. Look, look at that. Yeah. Rocking Episode guide. Hurricane. I'm here on IMBD. I don't know where to find this. It says 2023. Oh. That's better than 2024. Doesn't, doesn't have a date. It's probably December 31st, 2023, which is basically Stop. like yeah, 2024. True. That makes me so yeah, sad. Yeah, it just says episode airs 2023. <sighs> Looking forward to it. OBX. OBX. It's so good. John B. It's so, so good. So good. So good. Do, 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 do. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. When is Hannah going to get her own show on Rumble? Ugh. Um, When I have less jobs. The show. That's, a, that's an honest answer. Mm. I told Hannah like three times, you should do your own podcast. And she goes, mm, mm. Is it just me or is some 
light blinking on Hannah's screen. Oh, that's probably the Hannah light. I don't think there was anything. Yeah, it is. It's blinking. I see it. What yeah, I think it's your computer. My computer's not blinking. No, it's true. Something's blinking. It was blinking on your screen. I just saw it. There it is again. What? Look. My eyesight's too bad. I can't see it. You have to look at... No, look here. Look on your computer screen. Look oh. at the... Look at the uh, oh. Twitch. Do you see that? What? What is that? I don't know, Hannah. Do you have like a strobe effect? Not that I know of. Because if you so look weird. in real life, it's not happening. So you know what someone... Yeah, look. You know what someone must be doing? Huh? They're probably taking a flashlight and like flashing it at you... At your computer, at the computer. <gasps> it's the upside down. Somebody from the upside down is flashing a light at me. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Yeah, are you, have what you not watched Stranger, Stranger Things? Things? Oh, no, I haven't seen Stranger Things. I've seen like two episodes. Thank I you, saw... Jay. Show. My name is Mark K. 855-940-MARK is our number. You know, we were talking yesterday a little bit about uh, celebrities that are conservative. It, it popped up because, I don't remember why it popped up, but we started talking about it. for Oh, it was because of Pat Sajak from Wheel of Fortune getting canceled on Twitter for posing with Marjorie Taylor Greene. That's what led to the conversation. And one of the people we mentioned was Tim Allen. Well, wouldn't you know it, Tim Allen was trending on Twitter today because he made a joke, a joke about the president. And he didn't make a president. He didn't make a comment about how liberal the president was, how how much of a dumb idiot Democrat he was. He simply made a joke about the president, and all of a sudden, the trolls on Twitter and everywhere else wanted to cancel him. Here was Tim Allen's tweet from 7:22 p.m. yesterday. Biden was on 60 Minutes. I heard he asked how long the show was. Now, <laughs> right? Funny joke. That was hilarious. Yeah, Hannah and liked it's it. Very lighthearted. Very lighthearted. Didn't really. I mean, it just all he's doing is calling the man stupid, not you know a lousy Democrat or a crazy socialist or any of those things. But man, you'd have thought he'd have done all that stuff. Uh, by the way, the Twitter trolls have attacked him, and they don't. If it had been any, if it had been Dave Chappelle, maybe a different story. If it had been uh, name a liberal comedian. Kathy Griffin? Sure. Fine. It, it, they probably she would have been, oh, Kathy, you're so witty. But it's Tim Allen, who's a known conservative in Hollywood. So all of a sudden, he's the, he needs to get canceled. Biden was on 60 Minutes. I heard he asked how long the show was. That's not funny, ultra MAGA dude. Ultra MAGA light year. 855-940-MARK is our number. Quick break. More with uh, Charlemagne the God and Ron DeSantis. It's coming up on the Mark K Show. Um, okay, so I'm going to remind you about Charlemagne the God and Ron DeSantis. Right, but can you do that? Do me a favor and remind me. That like 20, 20 seconds 30, before? Yeah, like 34. Let me write it down 50. so that I remember to remind Great you. Great idea. Remember? So my, my metrosexual bag has been delivered. Oh, it has it? Yes. Did they uh, send a snarky note with it as well? Saying that it had been delivered? <laughs> yeah. No. But and I, an arrow pointing to it being delivered. God, that was, that was the snarkiest customer. <laughs> I mean, I kind of, I was fine with it. I wasn't like upset. But it was definitely, I could see how people would get turned off by it. So, all right. So, if all goes well, I'll be using my new metrosexual bag tomorrow. Ooh. I'm not excited. Um, by the way, that bag underneath the uh, table over there with the, yeah. the fridge on it. Yeah. Is that a new bag? There was like a tag still attached to it on the inside. That bag? Yeah. No, I've had that bag for years. Did you just never take off the tag on the inside? Well, what are you talking about? Is there not a tag? I thought it was attached. I don't think there's a tag attached to that bag. Um. I don't think there is. I've had that bag for years. That's just a camera bag. So, it's like, that's for heavy camera equipment. Uh huh. You'll notice the interior is basically just empty and there's these velcro. It's really still nice. Yeah. No, it's not. I mean, it's a camera bag. It's got to yeah. be, it's got to be kind of nice. Very nice for the nice equipment. Correct. You Correct. Have, you have to make sure that it stays nice so that it uh, doesn't fall apart and all your cameras break. What's not funny is the fact that someone that stupid is our president. Squeak truth. True that, squeak. You squeak the truth. Yeah. That'd be a good name for a podcast for Squeak. Oh, that would be. I Squeak the Truth. We're just going to come up with podcast names for everybody. <laughs> uh, who wants a podcast name? I want a podcast name. All right. The Hannah Guile Show. Perfect. Next. That was easy. That was easy. Whiskey Musings. Whiskey Musings is better. Uh, how about this? The Whiskey Musings Podcast. Yeah. Huh? I'm on fire, dude. I I'm love on fire. that. Give me do another me, one. Do me. Give me a J? Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh, uh, how about, okay, I got one. Ready? Yeah. Uh, pass the J. <laughs> 
Best oh, thing. no. Fire up the J. Nice. Either one oh. of those. Nice. Right? Fire yeah. up the J with J Bows. There you go. That's Word. Good. Or Bows Nose, but that's good. Bose how would you, <laughs> we how would you spell firing up the J? I would spell it F R I. No, F-I-R-I-N not that part. F R I N apostrophe up U P the T H A the. That's the cool. J would be J A Y. Okay. Right? Yeah. And it would be a picture of J. And then, like, having a J in his and head. his head would be on fire. <laughs> like, his head would be glowing, like, with a little bit of smoke. And then a picture of, like, Snoop Dogg Wait, in the back. Wait, what if? I like it. What if yeah. he had, like, the top of his head on fire, but then he had, like, his little J? <laughs> you could do that, too, yeah. Or you could have, like, a hand holding a lighter to his head. Not his little J. Right. Not, I don't want to talk. Okay, this has gone <laughs> drastically wrong. Yes, it has. This is, this is your fault. Wrong. I thought that was funny. It's really annoying how Mark calls Joe Biden our president all of the time. I try to do it uh, tongue in cheek, and uh, you know, in a sarcastic way. It doesn't always way. come off that way. It doesn't but yeah. always come up that way. Um, I'll stop. Spark it up with Jay, says Spitler. Spark it up with Jay is good too. Spittler. Yeah. Spitler. Spitler. That's funny. <laughs> kind of like the Mark K show. Take away the breaks. It's roughly one and a half hours. Mark K for one and a half hours a day. Loving it. <laughs> But, you know, here's the thing. The breaks are still entertaining. Like, we don't play you the commercials. Yeah. We don't play you. I could. <laughs> okay, Jay, play them the commercials. Well, I don't have one right now. Oh, well. We got to wait. We got to wait for the uh, the next break. All right. Look, Facebook finally caught up. Did everybody on Facebook get notifications today? I did. Because if you did, because it was really slow going for a while. I mean, we had more people watching on Getter. Where did you get the sweatshirt? This sweatshirt? Why, funny you should ask. That is a great question. We are Golden 930. I got it at markkshop.com. Let me paste for you in the getter chat the link so you can go and get you one. Uh, exactly like it. Markkshop.com. Now, keep in mind, when I post in the getter chat, it's not a clickable link. Oh. You got to copy it and paste it. Or just go to Mark K Shop. Barbie really Guile did also not. Did also not. That's good English. Barbie Guile uh, did not get a notification for the show today. Perfect. Weird. Hmm, maybe so you should have people... reminded her the way you were supposed to remind me of stuff and also wear that sweatshirt. Shut <laughs> Mom, in case you're wondering, I read your text message to Mark. By the way, Barbie, <laughs> just so you know, Hannah wrote down these reminders on her big old desk calendar. That's <laughs> no, why I she didn't. forgot. That is not true. Had Stop she had it on her phone lies. calendar, it would have been a totally different story. <laughs> that is such a lie. Totes different story. No. You're being a fibber wibber. A what? A fibber wibber. I'm being a fibber wibber. That's what people who fib, fib, fib are called. I apologize. Fibber wibber. Never heard that. It's a Hannah original. Ah. Yeah, it's, it's a. So it's, when you say that's what people say, that's they what do. You now say. it's like fetch from Mean Girls. Fetch did catch on. That's so fetch. So fetch. Just we because all say you it, say so. it's fetch doesn't mean that it is. <laughs> uh, does Mark K's wife shop too? I, I assume. Does she shop? Does Pam like to shop? Have you ever met a woman that didn't spend money? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no offense, but yeah, everybody shop. I shop, she shops, we all shop. She shop. <gasps> you know what's weird? My kids don't like to spend money. I it's weird. Don't like spending my money. Yeah. <laughs> I knew there was a pre. My daughter the other day for like it was was it her birthday? I don't know what it was. Maybe it was something. I guess it was near her birthday. Yeah. And I, what do you want for your birthday? She goes, Oh, I want this. And then she looked up. She goes, wait, never mind. And I go, why not? She goes, it's too expensive. And I go, how much is it? She goes, it's like $40. And I go, I think we can swing that. It's your birthday. I think we can. Does she know who you are? I mean, also, she's like, <laughs> I'm like, I've never given her the impression that like $40 was a lot of money. Really? My, and my parents always did. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's maybe that's their problem. And now you spend all these now you spend everyone else's money. I don't really spend. Well, you just money. said you don't. But I mean, they, I enjoy spending like, and my son, like not never, my own money. He'll get money for his birthday, right? And yeah. he'll be, and he'll just hand it to me and go, savings, savings, savings. So my parents made me and put go, everything in savings. The, we don't we were like, Do you want anything? You want to go buy something? And he's like, No, nope, savings. And we're like, Okay. And I go, Do you need new sh-? like his shoes will be all gross? I'm like, You need new shoes. He's well, like, like, no, Well, like remember these are with fine. the golf shirt. Oh, yeah, the golf shirt. Yeah. Oh, wait, by the way, you have 15 seconds, and you need to talk about Charlemagne the God and Ron DeSantis. Perfect. Thank you. His golf shoes are so old, and I was like, I'm going to get you new golf shoes. He's like, I don't need them. These are fine. I was that way with my throwing shoes, though, in track. Dad kept on wanting to get me new shoes. You probably needed new throwing shoes because I outthrew you in the show. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Marquee Show. Oh, yeah, it is. And it's only, I can't believe it's.
it's only Tuesday. I'm having so much fun. I feel like it's a Friday. But that's what happens when you. Uh, that's what happens when you love what you do, and you know that you that you got a goal. So you got to have a goal, folks. And our goal is really exciting. Our goal is to save the republic. That's the. It's not just a catchy name for our podcast, Mark K Saves the Republic. It's also our our mission statement here on the Mark K Show, and really in life, we come in here every day and we let you know the truth. We let you know the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help us God, and we help you spread that truth to other people. A Co couple different ways you can do it. You can uh, you can go to markk.com and sign up for our Catriot Network, and that way you can you can share the links and the ideas, and the, uh, we'll send you the Catriot Manifesto absolutely free. Um, you can listen to the show. You can share our podcast. You can share our live streams and videos and really get the word spread all around so everybody knows how important it is to keep America conservative, uh, to keep America patriotic, and to keep America out of the control of those people who are, well, let's face it, out of control. 855-940-MARK is our number, and it seems to be working because yesterday I played this clip from Charlemagne the God, noted, noted hip-hop morning show host and noted African-American icon and noted political uh, icon as well because he's the guy that uh, Joe Biden said this to. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. And that was one of the, I mean, that's one of the moments that propelled Charlemagne the God from stardom to superstardom. And then, of course, later on, he said, you know, I'm not voting for Joe Biden because of that remark. Because of that remark, one of the one of the most popular black talk show hosts with a huge African-American audience and a huge amount of influence uh, said, I'm not voting for Joe Biden. He did say, however, he was going to vote for Kamala Harris. So we could still blame him for that. But in the end, I don't think he's voting for either of them anymore because he said this about Ron DeSantis. For months, Republican governors have sent busloads of illegal immigrants to sanctuary cities like New York, D.C., and Chicago with the message of, if you like them so much, they're yours, okay? Well, just in time for Hispanic Heritage Month, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis upped the game by sending two plane folds of immigrants to the East Coast elite's favorite vacation island, Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. I personally think it's genius. Whoa! And then the panel looked at him and gave him these dirty looks. Well, I played that clip yesterday, and some guy called me out and said, you're hiding something. You edited it. You made it seem like he said something else, but you wanted it to sound one way or the other. And you just, you know, I don't do that. If I edit something or if I cut it short, it's because I have more that I would like to say, and I don't necessarily need to give Charlemagne the God, who has five times the audience I do, any more free publicity. But I will play you the rest of the clip to prove not only that I'm not hiding anything, which I, you should already know, but also to show you how the tides are turning against Joe Biden, how the tides are turning against Kamala Harris, how the tides are turning against Democrats, and how more and more every single day that these clowns are in office, every single day that Joe Biden's out there sticking his foot in his mouth saying the pandemic's over, saying we're going to bomb China if they bomb Taiwan, saying all these ridiculous things, every time Kamala Harris is out there saying just days, mind you, before a busload of immigrants shows up on her front porch that the border is secure... It, after after years of this happening and two more years to go, the African-American electorate, electorate is realizing that Democrats do not have their best interests at heart. The only people that Democrats care about are the Democrats. And if they really want change, if they really want someone to take notice, then maybe Republicans are the way to go. So here is the second part of the Charlemagne the God clip. I personally think it's genius. But I wish that governors like Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott would give Democratic governors and mayors more of a heads up, because then that would expose the hypocrisy of the Democrats, which is they don't want immigrants here either. Look at that. It's Charlemagne the God saying they're good. They, we need to more uh, easily expose the hypocrisy of the Democrats. What? Oh, my goodness. The, the Democrats of the DNC are rolling over in their... Well, they're not dead yet, but they're rolling over in their in their really expensive uh, velvet couches and their and their big leather chairs that they bought probably with taxpayer money. They are just beside themselves. They can't believe that Charlemagne the God is saying that Democratic governors are hypocrites because they don't want immigrants either. When Ron DeSantis proved it, and the only thing Charlemagne the God would have done differently is to let the governors know ahead of time so that they could have made it public. They could have been waiting there with with police vehicles and fire trucks to say, ah, get. Turn that plane around. We don't want him here. It's probably, number one, the reason why Ron DeSantis didn't do that. And number two, you're not supposed to give these people warning. Guess who doesn't have warning that immigrants are flooding into the country? People in Arizona. People in the Texas border towns. I mean, by now, it's a way of life for them. They just assume 
that it's happening. They just assume that these immigrants are going to be pouring into their towns and into their neighborhoods and walking through their backyards and filling up their hospitals and their schools and their parks and their homeless shelters. They just, it's a way of life for them. But nobody ever announces, by the way, 10,000 immigrants about to come across the border. Be prepared. Nobody's given the choice. The people in Arizona don't have the choice to call out the National Guard and have them flown, I don't know, to some kind of base, some kind of area, to Area 51. Isn't that, that's in New Mexico somewhere, right? That's pretty close by. Yeah. What if we turned Area 51 into a real alien paradise? I mean, supposedly there's aliens there already, so get the illegal ones and the interstellar ones together together. I mean, it's a big enough place from what I hear. I've seen the satellite footage and that and, a, you know, a couple of couple of uh, YouTube videos ab about it. But it seems like, you know, a, a no brainer, a win win. Aliens of all kind can just go and live happily at Area 51. But this is a big problem for the Democrats when Charlemagne the God is calling your governor's hypocrites and saying Ron DeSantis a Republican, a conservative Republican, an ultra MAGA Republican, a Trump Republican, when Ron DeSantis is a genius and the governor of Massachusetts and the governor of Illinois and Mayor Lori Lightfoot and all these other people are hypocrites. That is a big problem. They got another big problem besides Joe Biden being the head of their uh, party. They've got another big problem. Fox News, Sean Hannity sent a reporter to Martha's Vineyard to get the real story about how Martha's Vineyard residents feel about Ron DeSantis sending immigrants to Martha's Vineyard. Listen to this woman. Her name is Elizabeth Bostrom, and she is a longtime resident of Martha's Vineyard. Were you surprised when they arrived? No, I wasn't. And I actually, I really praise him for doing that because it wasn't a stunt. I know the media has been saying it's a stunt. But, um, you know, how do you get the attention of... Of, of the administration? How do you get the attention of Harris, who's supposed to be in charge of this? That Do you think she's been a good border czar? I don't, it's really a joke, and everyone knows it. Uh, it's really a joke. Kamala Harris as a border czar? That's a good one. I haven't heard a joke that funny since yesterday on the Mark K show during Talk Like a Pirate Day. Ha 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 ha. R. Kamala Harris is a joke. The border czar position is a joke. The open border is a joke. Joe Biden is a joke. This whole thing is a joke. And this Martha's Vineyard resident is glad that Governor DeSantis sent these immigrants to her home to, to shed light on the issue that's going on. Why are all these immigrants in our country? Why is it that these sanctuary cities are turning them away? And why is it that Joe Biden and border czar Kamala Harris are doing squat about it? It's a joke. Only it's not, it's not at all funny. Uh, another guy who's very upset with Ron DeSantis, which, by the way, I'm going to be honest with you. If you've got now Charlemagne the God and residents of Martha's Vineyard, both of whom are supposed to be furious at Ron DeSantis and Republicans for this quote-unquote political stunt, if you've got them on Ron DeSantis' side, if you've got them attacking Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, if you've got them saying Ron DeSantis is a genius and Kamala Harris is a joke, well, then it chalk one up for Ron DeSantis because he's beating you over and over and over again. And he is exposing exactly what Charlemagne said, the hypocrisy of these Democrat governor governors and not just the governors, but the vice presidents and the presidents, quote unquote, as well. 855-940-MARK is our number. Somebody else who hates Ron DeSantis or maybe just kind of taken advantage of the situation maybe seize an in to bolster his own political cred credentials, get his name out there, maybe ride the coattails of Ron DeSantis's marketing department and PR department and, and try, to, try to boost his own career, is a guy from, what is it called? I want to make sure, hold on, let me, re let me read this because if I mispronounce it, then everyone's going everyone's gonna to yell at me. And by everybody, I mean like four people, but they'll do it really loudly. It's a guy from... Where is this? The the sheriff, a Democrat sheriff from Bexar County in Texas. His name is Javier Salazar. And he has announced that the Bexar County Sheriff's Office is investigating crimes uh, uh, but that may have been committed during the flights of migrants from Texas by Governor Ron DeSantis to Martha's Vineyard. Florida gave them an opportunity to see Green Bay. Okay, here we have a clip from him. This is the guy. He's a uh, he's a sheriff in Bexar County. Bexar County, by the way, is basically San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas, home of the Alamo. Uh, this guy runs the joint. He's the sheriff, and he's not happy with Ron DeSantis, and he's investigating this. What infuriates me the most about this case is that here we have 48 people that are already on on hard times, 
All right. They are here legally in our country at that point. They have every right to be where they are. And I believe that they were preyed upon. Somebody came from out of state, preyed upon these people, um, lured them with promises of, of a better life, which is what they were absolutely looking for, and with the knowledge that they were going to cling to whatever hope they could, they could be offered for a better life, uh, to just be uh, exploited and uh, hoodwinked into making this trip to Florida and then onward to Martha's Vineyard for what I believe to be nothing more than political posturing uh, to make a point. Oh, it's Bear County, Texas. Is that right? Yes. Where did you hear that? Um, everyone on Rumble is typing it out. Oh, well, then they would they probably know. Bear County, Texas. So the X is silent. I guess so. All right. Well, we'll have to, <laughs> either that or Rumble's playing a big trick. It doesn't matter. This guy from, uh, from Bear County, Texas, this sheriff, is saying that Ron DeSantis, again, like many people in the Democrat Party are doing, echoing the phrases, political stunt. He would, these people are pawns. He took advantage of them. We're investigating this case, blah, 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 blah. Clearly, this guy's trying to get national attention. Well, Ron DeSantis is no dummy. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he knows exactly how to fire back at everybody. And he has he has an argument to shut you down. And once again, he fired back at uh, this Democrat in Texas who took shots at him in Bear County. The Daily Wire reports uh, that Salazar admitted he could not name any laws that were broken, and he did not name any suspects, Ryan Savadre, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right either, wrote, uh, breaking the Democrat sheriff in Bear County, Texas, who opened up an investigation into the 50 illegal immigrants being flown to Martha's Vineyard, says he cannot point to any criminal statuses that have been violated, statutes that have been violated, just says that it was, quote unquote, distasteful. Well, your job as sheriff is not to it's not to investigate distasteful acts or things that you believe are distasteful. It's to uphold the law. Uh, uh, DeSantis said at a press conference that the people who were contracted gave the illegal immigrants a release form to sign and a packet that included a map of Martha's Vineyard. So it was obvious that that's where they were going, and they gave that to them, DeSantis added. Florida's Voice reported Monday that they obtained one of the brochures that the illegal migrants were given prior to heading to Martha's Vineyard. The publication said that they confirmed the information with the governor's office. The brochure, which was written in both English and Spanish, is titled Massachusetts Refugee Benefits, Massachusetts Beneficios para Refugiados, and includes pictures of Massachusetts. Then he went on to say, look, uh, these people went to a sanctuary town. They went to a place where they were given the opportunity to be, to be taken care of. That is not Florida. And then also Ron DeSantis uh, pointed out that Bear County, Texas, is the same place where 54 migrants died in a hot truck that was abandoned on the side of the road uh, under this sheriff's jurisdiction. So really, what Ron DeSantis did was help about 50 or so immigrants find a safer place to land, a safer place where they could get the things that they need to survive and to thrive in the United States of America. He sent them to a sanctuary place, a state that, that says, bring us your tired and your poor, and we will do the best that we can to get them off of Martha's Vineyard and into a, uh, into a military base where they can be fed and housed and given money and whatnot. What happened in Bear County, Texas, was that migrants in a truck died of heat exhaustion because the sheriff there didn't do his part to actually uphold the law. You know, they used to say, don't mess with Texas. But right now, I think the answer uh, is uh, don't mess with don't mess with Ron DeSantis. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275 is our number if you want to give us a buzz. I will take a couple of your phone calls here in just a minute. On the way, since it is Tuesday, we do want to keep you in, in, uh, abreast of the situation. American Trivia Warrior returns today and Hannah's Hot Takes, where we give Hannah a list of topics and 30 seconds to, you know, let us know everything she knows or thinks about those particular topics. Very informative and entertaining if you've never heard it before. Uh, plus, we'll play some How Dumb Are They and give away some Marque Show swag. That's on the way, too. 855-940-MARK is our number. Quick break. We will be right back. Hmm. What's um, up? What? What's up? I didn't have the right thing. <laughs> Library Hack uh, says, I sponsor T, uh, I think it's pronounced Mr. or Master, I'm not sure, uh, to uphold Twitch Tuesday. You what? 
Twitch Tuesday. I assume that means for uh, the Twitch train. Oh, yes. The one we do on Friday. Yeah. But we do it to Friday. We do it on Friday, though. Oh, wait. Who wanted the uh, commercials? I don't know. Not me. The odds of having a child diagnosed oh, with off. autism. That's, the worst one. <laughs> That's like literally the worst one. And it's about autism. Hi. Hello. What's going on? Nothing. Did you like my sign? I like was trying to write as quickly as I could. Yeah. You can just jump in too if you need to. I know. You say that, but then sometimes you're on a roll. So it's just easier for me to just be like, pronounced bear. Okay. Is it, do we get confirmation of that? Yeah. I mean, ever like I got a message from Julie and then like yeah. 14 people on Rumble said it's pronounced, pronounced bear. I wish I would spell it bear. Right. Like, yeah. Like that would make... Way more sense? That would make way more sense. Like, for example, my name isn't spelled M-A-X-R-K, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, that's correct. Uh, hey, Max Rook, it's Mark. Okay. No, that was good. Um, so I told you I watched, oh, I did, because I told you I cried and it was weird. Um... That I watched Father Stew with Mark Wahlberg in it. Oh, yeah. Have you seen it yet? No, is it good? You need to see it. You cried? I cried. It was so, so good. Wait, okay. I thought you said you were watching Father Stew. I just said that. Okay. Sorry, I was on the phone. And then I heard you saying something about... She cried. Yeah. Yeah, because it Did was such a good Did you see Father movie. Stew? Yeah, I saw Father you Stew. Didn't cry. Did you cry? Oh, I thought you were talking about Daddy's Home, too. My bad. What? What? I'm sorry. My I'm bad. sorry. No. Jay uh, took some Dayquil, so that's what that's what happens when I yeah. jump in at the last minute. <laughs> no, you're good. I was like, I'm what going are you away. talking about? Wait, but you have seen Father Stu, yes? Yes. How did you really like it? Yeah, I thought it was really good. Oh my gosh. Did you cry though? No, I didn't cry. I mean, oh. but I'm also like being a little woman here. <laughs> but it was it was very good, especially like I was watching it by myself too, which made it even worse. Because normally, like if I'm by myself, I can be heartless. Yeah. Um, I couldn't though. It was just, it was very touching and I don't know. It was, it was great. This guy went from living like the worst, like most secular, like really, truly awful life, like multiple DUIs type yeah. situation and yeah. fighting and all this stuff to becoming a priest and yeah. like devoting his life to God. It was That's cool. better than going the other way around. What, from devoting Starting your life as a to priest God? And, and then <laughs> like going out and getting drunk and into bar fights and stuff like is that. that. Guy, is that guy still alive? Father no, he Stu? died in okay. 2014. He was 50. Oh. What did he die of? Well, I can't tell you that because then it kind of gives the whole story away. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Um, I mean, I feel like you've given most of the story away as it is. Well, no, I don't want to give like spoilers though. It's a really good movie and you should watch it. Okay. Have you seen Nicolas Cage's new movie yet? It's horrible. Really? What was it called? Oh, I you didn't like that? The other day, where was my, my wife was out somewhere. She was. I don't know. She was watching something with my daughter. So I go, oh, great. I'll go watch this movie that I know you don't want to watch. And I rented it, and I watched, like, the first 15 minutes, and I turned it off. Really? It was so the, it was so bad. I didn't like it at all. Hmm. You may like it, but I did not. I thought it was pretty funny. Oh, you did? You watched it? Yeah. Never mind, then. I take it back. No. No. Everybody's got their own opinion. Oh. Did you watch more than 15 minutes of it? Oh, I watched the whole thing. Oh. I thought it was hilarious. Oh, I didn't like it at all. Especially, uh... Well, since you didn't watch the whole thing, especially the part where they uh, took LSD together. Oh yeah, that what? was great. I didn't, I didn't watch that. Who took LSD together? The uh, Nick Cage and, and uh, the, the guy. guy. Yeah. Okay, got it. Huh. I didn't get that far. I, I got to the. I can't imagine Nick Cage ever taking LSD. Well, it was <laughs> his character. I his know. character, which actually happens to be Nick Cage. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't buy the whole thing. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> he plays himself. He yeah, plays he plays himself. himself. That's weird. Yeah. Well, it's like in how, uh, what's his name, played himself in Being John Malkovich. Mm. Oh, that was a great movie. That was a great movie. See, that movie I could get behind. Yeah. That'd be so weird to find a door that goes to John Malkovich's mind. J.S. Chiffon says, Mark's Lost. Great movie. <laughs> Show. My name is Mark K. 855 Mark is our number. Taryn Fenske, communications director for Governor Ron DeSantis. Could be Fenske, could be Fenk. 
things are being spelled with a lot of silent letters these days. Uh, she wrote, immigrants have been more than willing to leave Bear County after being abandoned, homeless, and left to fend for themselves. Florida gave them an opportunity to seek greener pastures in a sanctuary jurisdiction that offered greater resources for them, as we expected. Unless the Massachusetts National Guard has abandoned these individuals, they have been provided accommodations, sustenance, clothing, and more options to succeed following their unfair enticement into the United States. Unlike the 53 immigrants who died in a truck found abandoned in Bear County this June. Thanks, Taryn. Communications Director Governor Ron DeSantis. Again, the sheriff of a county where 53 illegal immigrants died needlessly is attacking Ron DeSantis for saving the lives of 50 some odd uh, immigrants from Texas and sending them to a place where they're receiving pretty much everything they wanted when they were unfairly enticed to this country. And that's the key phrase there, as when they were unfairly enticed to this country. Because that's exactly what happened. They were enticed by the Joe Biden administration to come to the United States with the hopes that there would be jobs ready for them, $15 an hour, enticed to the United States with the, the, the um, promise of, oh, you know, a path to citizenship so that they would never be deported. They could stay here. They could even vote for elected officials. They were enticed with all of these things. And now they get here, they find out that there's coyotes that are smuggling them for, uh, you know, terrible, horrible purposes, that there's crime running rampant, that they don't necessarily have all the opportunities that they were enticed to believe unfairly that they were going to have. And Florida, the governor of Florida and his staff were the ones that blew the lid off of all of that. 855-940-MARK is our number. This is Eric in Edgewater, Florida. Eric, how are you? Thanks so much for calling the Mark K Show. What's going on? It's getting to be a greater day to be a patriot, Mark. I love it. What's on your mind, Eric? What do you want to say? Uh, DeSantis is a genius, to quote Charlemagne the God, who I never thought would have said that about DeSantis. Um, he forced he forced the Democrats to show that they're really just virtue signaling. The left is eating itself, and I don't think they understand that they're boiling the frog all wrong. What's your take on that? Uh, I think probably you're one hundred percent accurate about everything. And the only like the best way to to discourage a Democrat or to make people realize what Democrats are really up to is to make them prove what they say is true. Put their money where their mouth is. You say you're for immigrants. You say you're a sanctuary city. Great. Here's some immigrants. What you going to do now? And we've all seen. It's the same thing they do with every single issue. They virtue signal for votes. But when it comes down to it, there's a reason why all those urban voters that they've been going after for years are still living in urban decay. Because the Democrats don't care about the problem. All they care about is exploiting the problem for political and financial gain. Quick break. We'll be right back. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah. Uh, hold on. I got to do this. I didn't do this yet. I don't fucking have time. Oh, to write us questions? Yeah. Enter entertain everybody, Hannah. I can't do this one. Okay. I've never, uh, that was kind of funny. I've never heard that phrase before. Which phrase? Boiling the frog all wrong. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Huh. Uh, Florida Renegade says, Hannah, tell Mark to look up the video of British people yelling F Joe Biden. Nice. That's funny. Uh, Brenna says, do you guys ever hear local stories from Colorado? Cops arrested a woman by train tracks, and the officer parked his car on the tracks, put her in the cruiser, and a train smashed into it before they could get her out. What? That sounds like it's out of a movie. Oh, I remember that movie. It was like Final Destination 5. No, not five. a movie. What? <laughs> this is a real story. Oh. I'll call you James. That's good. Um, oh, look. My buddy Mark Patrick said he thought that Nick Cage movie was funny, too. Oh, look. Everybody... Has no sense of humor <laughs> or a bad sense of humor. <laughs> uh, all right. Wait, what's not true, Redford? 
Is this not true? I feel like it's true. What? The the story that Brenna just oh. said. I'll just look it up. I it, I mean, it sounds true. Uh, I think it's true. Three hours ago, yep. Woman seriously hurt after Colorado police car she was placed in is hit by train. That's very sad. So wait, is she still alive? Because it just says seriously hurt. I guess so. Wow. That's horrible. Yikes. Can you imagine? I know somebody who's about to be rich. Her? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is definitely a massive lawsuit brewing right there. Yeah. That's horrible. Like, why would you? Why would you stop on the train track to arrest somebody? Like, I get, I get having to to chase, you know, a perp. Yeah. But park different. your car literally anywhere but on the railroad tracks. Like, you can stop traffic because guess what? Cars can stop on a dime. I mean, you know, comparatively to trains. And what's amazing is that they didn't hear the train coming. Or they I might. Hear the train th- I think they. M- I don't know I mean, because she was already in the car. So, like, what were they doing? Oh, hey, man. you think this train's gonna stop? Oof! I got the lights on. He better. So, both my uncles and my grandpa worked um, on the railroad. One of my uncles still does because uh, I think he's only fifty-three. But uh, it was horrible. He. Um, I think he ended up having like PTSD or something from it. Maybe not, but it definitely like made him really sad for a long time. He uh, was driving, you know, the train, and there was this guy who wanted to make, commit suicide. And he stood in front of the train, like knowing it was coming, and looked him right, looked my uncle right in the eyes. At and like my uncle was like honking the horn, like telling him to like essentially get out of the way. And the guy like looked at him right in the eyes before he got hit. And it messed my uncle up for so long. No, oh, I bet. Because like there's nothing he could do about it. Isn't that awful? Ugh. Because, like, I feel like, I I wonder if that guy before he died, like, thought, oh, yeah, this guy will be fine (laughs) feeling responsible for killing me. Isn't that so terrible? No, that would definitely. That would mess you up, right? Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Ugh. It was really bad. Are you talking about eating uh, frog legs, guys? Frog legs are tasty. Mm, that's smart, Cheryl. Hmm. Uh, Cheryl says that she's a photographer part-time, and it's amazing how quiet train trains can be. That's why she never takes photos on the tracks. I just, I just can't see trains being quiet. So, like, I mean, it depends on... On the kind of train. I mean, it's not going to be quiet like... Well, yeah, know, I mean, if it's like a... Like a fan. I mean, if it's like a, you know, Marta up in Atlanta, then yeah, that thing's pretty quiet. Yeah, but like these are like uh, trains with lots if of boxcars. If it's a cars. freight train, yeah. like, like, I feel like you would hear that, but... Yeah. That's just me. No, that's how it was. So we used to, um, we used to live across the street from train tracks, and I used to climb a tree... That was right near the train tracks, and my mom always said uh, to never go on the other side of the tree in case a train was coming. And one day, I did not listen to her, uh, and I was about 40 feet up in the tree, because these are really massive trees up in Washington, good climbing trees, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, I was about 40 feet up, and I didn't have time. <laughs> I, like, kind of froze in fear, you know? And I climbed a limb around the other side of the tree over the train tracks, and it was insane. Because it came so quickly, I I just couldn't, I couldn't get around. And so the train was underneath of me, and you could feel, it was like a hot wind coming up. And it took me probably like 15 minutes to climb down, and I had a fever by that point because my body was like in shock because I was like eight years old and just in fear. It was probably the longest train ever, too. It was. Oh, my gosh, because you know how long they can pass for? 
And I was like clinging and like, you know, like when you get shaky, if you're like actually scared, <laughs> I was very shaky. It's fine. Mm. Well, I gotta find out what, this is. what? We were answering. Okay. I am my body. But yeah, hundred percent. My body went into shock. <laughs> really, Jess? Jess says the best thing I ever tasted that was weird. Escargot. Those snails were the tastiest thing ever. I have Brenna said she sent you it. another awful story from Colorado. Did you really? Joe Ray, like that is hideous and horrific. You are correct. My sister is a sheriff's deputy. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Love it! This is the Mark K Show. Dang, Mark, you are on fire today. Keep it up, buddy. Well, thank you. I think I will for at least another two hours. He's Eight, married. Eight five five nine. <laughs> oh yes. Also, I'm married. But thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Eight five five nine four zero. Mark is our number. Eight five five nine four zero. Mark, if you're trying to get through, uh, real quick, I want to get to the. Uh, I want to get to this interesting story about. There's this interesting story about. Um, what's his name? Don Lemon. But before we get to that, let's go to Rick in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. Hi, Rick. How are you? Hey, Mark. Thanks for taking my call. I'm Absolutely. good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Rick, I'm so glad. What's going on, sir? What do you want to say today? Well, I just want to follow up to your previous uh, episode about this sheriff in, in Bear County, yeah. uh, Texas. Yeah, I, Bear I County, so Texas. Texas. It's Bear County, yeah, which was, is – it's interesting because it's spelled B-E-X-A-R and it's pronounced Bear, but Texas is, yeah. is not spelled T. It's pronounced T's. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Well, I was just I was in law enforcement for 29 years. Okay. And I was just so appalled by what this sheriff down there did. Yeah. Mainly all for political gain. Uh, it's just ridiculous. I have relatives in San Antonio, Texas, and I'm sure they're suffering from the plight of this whole you know illegal immigration thing. Oh sure. So anyway, what's interesting is I looked him up on the web and I found the website for comments to his sheriff's department yeah. and I tried sending it two different times and both times it was blocked. Oh, which I leads me to believe that they either have their website turned off or they're just being inundated with aggravated uh, people across the country like myself. You know, and again, being law enforcement, Rick, and I imagine uh, you could probably answer this better than anyone, a sheriff, a police officer, or so, uh, somebody like that, that that's in charge of a local county or a local uh, you know, uh, city or state, uh, their job is to protect the citizens of that county or state, correct? Their job is not to go and investigate crimes that may have been committed in other states. Absolutely. Oh, God. Just, Absolutely. Just making sure. And I, was... I don't even know why he thinks he would have jurisdiction to go after a governor of, a, of another state. Yeah. The whole thing was just a big political ploy as far as I'm concerned. Rick, you're absolutely and right. Ridiculous. And it's a black eye for all law enforcement officers all across the country for him to, to, to take this step. Yeah. Just my honest opinion. Well, hey, we'll keep trying that website and let us know if you ever get your comment through. Uh, 855 They do that, by the way. The Democrats, they do that as soon, man, as soon as they start to get the heat or as soon as they realize that not everybody in the world believes the way that they believe or has their back when they say or do something stupid. Because that's the, that's the big myth of liberalism. When you're a liberal, when you're a Democrat, when you're one of these, you know, teachers who goes into school and starts talking about your sexuality and your gender with your young kindergarten students, you think that everybody's going to be behind you. You falsely believe that everyone's going to have your back. When you're a school board official and you start teaching critical race theory or demanding that students violate the direct order of the governor by wearing a mask because you are personally afraid for your life uh, because of the propaganda coming out of Dr. Fauci's office about COVID. When you do those kinds of things, they assume Democrats and liberals and these socialist weirdos, they believe that the whole world is behind them. They just think, well, of course, everybody wants to have an abortion. And everybody thinks that the Supreme Court is wrong for denying a woman the right to choose, which, A, they didn't even do, and B, it ain't even true. So you've got these, uh, it's it's a weird thing, and they're shocked. They're really shocked. They are beside themselves. They, they break down. They can't even understand how not everybody feels the same way. 
And this sheriff in Texas, in Bear County, Texas, uh, this sheriff, this guy, he, pu he put this statement out there. He went after Ron DeSantis, which is not something you want to do. He went after this whole, uh, this whole migrant move to Martha's Vineyard, which, again, everybody seems to be happy. Ron DeSantis is happy because he got everybody talking about the border again. The folks in Martha's Vineyard are happy because they got rid of the immigrants. The immigrants are happy because they're nowhere near the border. They're not going to be deported. They got brand new clothes, stuffed animals. They got they got lobster rolls. And now they're chilling in the Massachusetts, uh, you know, National Guard um, commune. And they're having probably, you know, they're probably have never felt safer in their entire lives. So it's a win, win, win. Why this sheriff is now jumping in to the fray. Uh, lead, you know, there's only one reason, and that is for political gain. But once again, assumes that everybody feels the same way, believes the press, believes the media, believes social media, believes Twitter, which is the worst thing you can do. Democrats will believe what Twitter says, and they will take it for the majority opinion. And so they'll go out there and they'll say something stupid like, I'm investigating Ron DeSantis for potential crimes against humanity because of what he did with these immigrants and sending them to Martha's Vineyard. Imagining, believing that everybody in the world is behind him and will have his back and feels the same way because that's what Twitter told him. And then when they do it, they realize everybody ain't feeling the same way. Not everybody has this dude's back. And everybody that doesn't starts going on his website, cut leaving comments, starts going on Twitter, retweeting, doxing him, trolling him, calling him out. And that's when they just shut it all down. Shut it down. I don't actually want to know what the real world's like. I just want to live in the bubble that the media has created for me. Shut it all down. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855 855- 9406275 speaking of shutting it all down and speaking of living in a bubble Don Lemon our favorite former former CNN late night host because you remember he got demoted Chris Licht who came in to take over CNN and clean house and de-democratify it uh you know de-liberalize it make it more like an actual news network you know the way it used to be the way it ought to be uh what he did first of all was well he he didn't but Chris Cuomo was um exercised <laughs> the demon of Chris Cuomo was exercised from the network just by sheer happenstance then of course he had to get rid of Brian Stelter one of the biggest cancers on uh, on that network got rid of him got rid of a couple of other people the White House dude quit and now he's going after the real big dogs like Don Lemon Don Lemon who's been sitting atop the late night uh peak at CNN for like nine years Don Lemon, who has zero credibility, zero idea what he's talking about, and transformed the late night talk show slot at CNN into a into a just a I mean you an angry racist rant fest where he would spew lies and 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 false narratives about Donald Trump throughout his entire presidency, his entire campaign, the whole mess in Charlottesville, the uh, the impeachment, not only the first one but also the second one, and just flat out just lie 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 about the Mueller report, about uh, the, uh, you know, about Spygate, about, you know, the uh, Steele dossier, about insurrection, about anything. If it was Donald Trump, Don Lemon was ready to get on there and call that guy a racist, misogynist, xenophobic, bigoted, uh, homophobe. Any negative, uh, any negative word that he could use against Donald Trump, Don Lemon probably, probably used or meant to if he didn't get around to it in the first nine years. Well, now he's been demoted and he's moving to the morning show. The morning show on CNN, which nobody watches because not only are they now competing with Fox News and MSNBC in the mornings, but they're competing with Fox News, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, and NBC. They all have morning shows, morning shows that are way more popular than anything on CNN. Even MSNBC with Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski is more popular than what they're going to be able to put together on CNN. Fox and Friends with our buddy Brian Kilmeade, way more popular than whatever they're going to put together on CNN. CBS This Morning, The Today Show. Uh, what's the other one? Good Morning America, GMA, as the cool kids call it. All of those are going to just bury Don Lemon, so eventually Chris Lick can just go in there and fire him for having bad ratings. In the meantime, he's got to serve out his sentence, and he had a woman on named Hillary Fordwich. And as you might be able to tell from her cool last name, she's British, she's a teacher, she happens to be white, and she was on with Don Lemon discussing the Queen's uh, funeral procession, what happens now with the monarchy, and they got to the topic of the inheritance because with King Charles III now taking over Buckingham Palace, 
he becomes one of the richest men in the world, thus, you know, inheriting all of the billions and billions of dollars and assets and jewels and everything else that Queen Elizabeth had heralded over for 70 years. In addition to that, his son, Prince William, now takes over the billion-dollar estate where the prince and princess of Wales reside. So a lot of big numbers changing hands, a lot of inheritance changing back and forth. And Don Lemon had a question about that inheritance and why it's not being given back to the people, specifically the African, well, I guess it wouldn't be African-American, it'd be African-British people, but you go, the black people black in people. England, yeah. Then you have the, those who are asking uh, for reparations for colonialism, and they're wondering, you know, $100 billion, $24 billion here and there, $500 million there. Some people want to be paid back, and, uh, and members of the public are wondering, why are we suffering when you are, you know, you have all of this vast wealth? Those are legitimate concerns. All right, so that was the question. What about reparations? There's a lot of people that are wondering, why are we suffering when you have all of this vast wealth, royalty of England? Why are we suffering? Why don't you give us reparations for your colonialism, which means slavery? Why don't you use those billions of dollars instead of handing them down to William and Kate and Charles and Charlotte and all those other perfect white people, why don't you hand out the money to all of the black uh, slave or the uh, descendants of black slaves who have been who've been persecuted and who have suffered under British colonialism? And this woman, Hillary Fordwich, answers him in a way that makes a perfect amount of sense, but also is totally shocking to Don Lemon himself. Listen to this. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? That was in Africa. Oh, look at that. Let's go. Let's follow. The, let's follow the supply chain all the way back. And if we follow the supply chain all the way back, we end up in Africa. And you should have seen Don Lemon's face. He was like, wait a minute. Are you even going there? But she wasn't even finished. She brought receipts. 2,000. Naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery. Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say who was rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages. Absolutely. That's where... They should start. That's right. We should start. You know what, Don Lemon? You are absolutely right. Let's go get reparations from the descendants of the African kings in in Ghana and well, I don't even I don't even pretend I'm not even gonna pretend to know where they were, but in Africa. Let's go get reparations from them. The kings and the descendants of the Africans who rounded up their own people and left them waiting on the shore to be picked up like they were UPS packages by the slave traders on those ships. And let's not forget the 2,000 British seamen, brave warriors who tried to stop slavery. She even pointed out Great Britain was the first country to abolish. So you want to talk about abolitionists? Great Britain abolished slavery first, and they sent 2,000 and more soldiers out to the sea to stop those ships, and they died. And they died trying to, white British people died trying to stop the slave trade, which started in Africa with the African kings. She wasn't even done. And maybe, I don't know, the descendants of those families where they died at the, in the high seas trying to stop the slavery, that those families should receive something too, I think, at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I mean... You know, there's an old saying when you're a lawyer, you never ask a question that you don't already know the answer to. Don Lemon should probably take a page from that. He asked this woman why the royal family gets to keep their riches, why they don't give reparations to the, to the descendants of slaves. And she says, you're absolutely right. Let's go back to Africa, get the reparations, give them to all the descendants of the slaves. And while we're at it, let's pay off the families of those 2,000 brave royal troops who died, died in the sea, trying to stop the evil slave trade. What, what do you think about that? What do you, what do you think about that, Don Lemon? Uh, here's what he said. Trying to stop the slavery, that those families should receive something too, I think, at the same time. Oh, wait, I had his reaction. It was very pathetic. Uh, he basically said, yes, this is a... Uh, this is a very interesting discussion. We'll have to um, we'll have to get back to it at a future time. Wait, I think here it is. Here I have the. Oh wait, I can play it for you here. Same time. It's an interesting discussion, Hillary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll continue to, to discuss in the future. Uh, it is um it is an interesting discussion. No, it's not. It's not interesting at all. It went, it blew up in your face. You're, you're sitting there with, listen to the pause yeah. after she speaks, after she stops speaking. Time. 
One, two, three. It's an interesting discussion, Hillary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll continue to, to discuss in the future. No, and the, and you won't continue to discuss it in the future because, A, you just got it handed to you on live television, and, B, you're going to be on a morning show soon, and they're not going to let you talk about that kind of stuff on the morning show. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. We got to take a break. We will be right back. More Mark K Show after this. That's the best thing I've ever heard. I yep. loved that so much. Oh, that made me so happy. I feel like nobody's ever been ballsy enough to do that. What is the Ever Since Club? He called in a couple weeks ago with the same opening. What line. does it mean, though? Ever since Joe Biden came into office. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah, that guy. What's the comment? Is it about what we're talking about? Yes. Okay. Wow. Uh, all right, now I need. That was so good. That honestly, that was my favorite segment of the day so far. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Because Don Lemon is just such a tool. Yeah. And he's so used to just being a jerk and condescending. And she was, the thing about it is because she's British, she seems like so polite. They just automatically seem polite and smart. But she actually is like polite and smart. But she like somehow did it without being like, you know, like douchey about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was just great. Uh, Joe Ropeman says, I like Mark's British woman accent. Thank you very much. I'm so glad <laughs> that you enjoyed my British woman accent. Mm. It was great. Um, Florida Renegade says, my mom could honestly claim reparations after what happened to her grandparents when they came here from Italy. Mm. Yeah. Oh, go to Minky, stop. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, whiskey. You're going to wear a, uh, a kilt to the tournament? Oh. That'll be fun. Polite, smart, and a bit snarky. It was a bit snarky, but it was in a way that I really appreciated it. You know? It was so good. That's so weird. So Julie just messaged me. She said, hey, so I'm trying to call in, and every time the line messes up, it either won't connect when Jay answers or as soon as he speaks... It goes haywire. I don't know what's going on. Um, was happening on Friday, too. Please tell him the 262 number isn't pranking him. No, it's probably static. We're mm. still having that static problem? Yeah, it hasn't stopped. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, Julie, you just have to keep on calling. Is it that same line or is it different lines? No, it's different lines. Gosh, dang it. We got more phone lines, but they didn't fix the static. So, um, Who do I need to contact about that, Mark? About what? The static on the phone lines? I don't know, somebody. Rick? Probably Rick. Okay. I feel like I've messaged him before about this. Rick Benson. Uh, what, what, how, oh, Jay's back on the phone. It's been happening for what, like a year-ish? Hmm. What's the new iPhone, the 14? The 14. Um, I 
All right. Should I CC anyone or just send it to Rick? I'm just going to send it to Rick. Okay. Okay. Done. It may be your phone and not the lines. It might be, Rachel. I... But I don't think it is because here's the thing. If you put someone on hold and you hear that they're static and then you go to a different phone line and pick it up, there won't be static. But then if you go back to that same line, then there will be static. This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. You can always uh, go to one of our K-Triad Radio Network radio stations, download their mobile app, and you can leave us an open mic message as well. Ding dong, the pandemic's dead. Which pandemic? The wicked pandemic. Ding dong, the pandemic's dead. Right, Biden, right. Uh, just vote Republican and get this clown out of the office. I mean, really, it's, it all comes down. It's really that simple, isn't it? Look, just vote Republican. Just do us all a favor. Vote Republican. We have some big news, by the way, coming up about some of the polls that they're telling you are leaning Democrat. I don't see it at all. They're telling you how the Senate is going to remain in Democrat control. I'm not seeing that either. Uh, and we have uh, some positive news about a lot of these races that are coming up in 49 days, folks. Today's Tuesday. Tuesday, the what's the date today? The 20th? All right, so we got we got one, two, three, four, five Tuesdays until we all go to the polls and vote. And uh, a couple of, like I said, a couple of big announcements about all that coming up here in just a minute. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. This is uh, John in Ohio listening on WHIO. Hi, John. How are you? Pretty good. How are you, Mark? Oh, doing great. What do you want to say? Well, I think you're giving that sheriff in Texas a little bit too much credit for intelligence. I oh. think it's really just as simple as he just likes attention, and he figured out this is a good way to get attention. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably right. I don't know if it's a good way to get attention, and there is also such a thing as negative attention. Uh, but, you know, for the Democrats, like I said, I believe that I believe that he wanted the attention until he got it, and then he realized, oh, not everybody's not everybody's on my side. And if everybody's not on my side, then... Well, then we're going to we're going to have a problem. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Uh, coming up in just a minute, we're going to play one of our favorite games. It's called How Dumb Are They? <laughs> and this is a game, by the way, don't make fun of me for the, I said, let's call it something else. But both Jay and Hannah said, no, no, no. We're totally cool calling it How Dumb Are They? What we do is we ask Jay and Hannah questions based on a particular category. And if you, with only the knowledge you have of Jay and Hannah and the category I give you, can correctly identify whether or not they will answer the uh, question correctly, um, you could win some free stuff. A Mark K. Show swag bag. How exciting is that? It's super exciting. So exciting. Thank you very much. 855-940-MARK if you'd like to play. We need two contestants, and we will do it right after this. Oh Jay Monty says, I'm so excited my open mic was played. Oh, yay. Yay. Uh, Brenna just messaged me. She goes, OMG, the two people um, complaining about your screen lights reflecting off of you and Jay is irritating me. Yeah, what is all that? I don't know. I think it, it might be your No, camera. she said it's not not the screen. I'm not irritating her. The people complaining about oh, it. Oh, but is irritating. it still happening? I guess so. Mm. But also, guys, it might be too. I switch from screen to screen and the lighting changes. I don't know. I don't know. I had too much caffeine again. What is the right amount of caffeine? I mean, is there a wrong amount? Yeah, mm, I've had too probably much. Probably none. Oh. I have heartburn now. I told Casey I had heartburn the other day. He goes, what's that feel like? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, what does heartburn feel like? And I said, you've never had heartburn? He goes, no. I said, never? And he goes, never. Is that not the weirdest thing ever? Uh, that is weird. How can you have never 
had heartburn? I don't know. I've had it. Yeah. And I was going to buy a t-shirt, but apparently you think they're uncomfortable, so I'm not going to bother now, and I'm going to save my money. I might buy some beer instead. Okay. See what you did, Hannah? You're costing us customers. This is why people think that you actually hate me, because they don't understand your humor. What are you talking about? <laughs> I am not humorous. I mean, I am humorous, but I'm not in this particular instance. You are, 100%. Nobody told me to wear my t-shirt. And I also don't have a t-shirt. I have a sweatshirt. Um, and nobody told me. They just both showed up. They had their little party together. A little shirt party? Mm-hmm. Sea Prince says, I'm 38 and have never had a heartburn. How is that possible? Crazy. Wait. King Ba 9000 says, I have never got, gotten heartburn either. What? Maybe you had it, but you didn't know it was heartburn. Yeah, Blaze, I've heard that about apple cider vinegar. Okay, Alan. Calm down. <laughs> Alan goes, Hannah just taking food right out of Mark's kids' mouths. No kidding, man. <laughs> Sorry, kids. You won't be going to college today because Miss Hannah forgot to wear her T-shirt. Oh, Dad. What are we doing instead? What are you talking about? I mean, you could always go get a job at the Piggly Wiggly or, you know, join the uh, armed forces. T. Brooks says, I believe Mark over Hannah. Thank you, T. Brooks. Appreciate it. Homie. These are the days where I want to quit my job. <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> Even the worst day working here is better than the best day working anywhere else. Um, yeah. See, he told you. Because it's not really working. Yeah, it's a fun time here. Is it caused by spicy foods? Not always. Um, I mean, yeah, it it can be. Kim and Ken, I'm not even drinking or I'm not even drinking any coffee. 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 I'm not saying it weirdly. <laughs> Coffee. Hannah, just a half teaspoon of baking soda and a half glass of water. Mix it, drink it. Works the best on heartburn. Interesting. Okay. Also helps the medicine go down. Helps the medicine go down. Tell Mark the kids will be mm. fine. I just bought a Catriot's knife last week. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Julie. <laughs> uh, those Catriot knives are the best. They really are oh, great. Where's my Catriot? still great. I've never heard of baking soda in water. What about it? For heartburn. Oh, really? Yeah, isn't that interesting? That is interesting. I'm very interested in that. We should do that. It's very salty. Salty. Maybe it's just gas. No, it's not could just, be just gas. gas. I know what gas feels could like. Be gas. Bum, 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 bum. Coffee is a plant, so you're cheating. I'm not drinking coffee. You're, drink, you didn't, you're not drinking coffee? I'm not drinking coffee. You're drinking tea. Yeah, but also, both Tea's of those things are allowed. Tea's a plant. Okay. I'm not concerned about it. Okay. Ooh, Jess Wegg, that's so sad. What happened? Jess Wegg says, I've lost 50 pounds this year over stomach issues. So, like, not, I assume that means not trying. Oof, that's hard. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, so it helps to neutralize the acid in your stomach. Oh, that makes sense completely. <laughs> Jay Fire goes, I've never had heartburn today. <laughs> <laughs> today. That's not hilarious. Today. <laughs> Somebody said not today, and I don't remember who it was, but it was in public, so I went, not today. <laughs> and they were like, what was that? And I was My like, oh. do that all the time. Good. <laughs> do they really? Do they still quote the poop toilet? Oh, yeah. They do all that stuff. <laughs> they always, not today is probably the most quoted thing. Really? Because she'll, she'll, they'll say something like, can we go here or not today? They go, not today. <laughs> Wait, so I know. Oh, they burned me really badly the other day at the Chipotle. What? Because I, um, I'm i going to run out of time for this story. Yeah, you got Aww. like five seconds. Okay. 
I'm going to write it down because I want to remember this. I'll tell it on the air. Okay. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. Hannah, if you don't want that kind of attention, then you really should take that upside down pineapple sticker off the back of your car. <laughs> I don't have one unless. Oh, you... is that must be a guy referring to the story you told yesterday about how oh, um, the dude at Wawa called you fine. 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 He's like, you're fine. <laughs> No, oh, when I said you were fine, I meant you were fine. Did you have, did, maybe that's the purple upside down. Uh, you did not put them. one on there, did you? I don't know. You might, I haven't checked there. the back of my car today. Great prank, by the way. Put an upside down pineapple on somebody's car and <laughs> watch, just watch all the unwanted attention they get from married folk. It'll yeah. be very, very exciting. 855-940-MARK. By the way, my kids, it's so funny because whatever, because every now and then when you're out somewhere and you do this kind of job, someone will recognize you. My voice mostly, like if I talk in public. Yeah, and you what, just get recognized yeah. so much. I mean, not off. Sometimes it's a bad thing. Like sometimes it's not that positive an experience. You're like I hate you, you fascist. Correct. And so what happens is, <laughs> typically, whenever I'm in public and somebody goes, "Are you Mark K?" I always wait a minute and I go, "I don't know. Do you like the show?" And then if they go, "Yeah, I love it," I go, "Oh, then I am. Let's take a selfie." But if they're like, "No, I kind of hate," it, I go, "Oh, and then I'm just some bald guy that looks a lot like him." But my and that's like They're my go-to. Baldest. It's my go-to line. It's my go-to. Line. Hey, are you Mark K? I don't know. Do you like the show? And so my kids now think it, they make fun of me all the time. So the other day, my wife ordered Chipotle, and I was out with the kids. And my okay. son, my son drives now, so he was driving. I go, just pull up. I'm going to run in and get the food. Right. So I run in and I get the food, and I'm walking back, and this guy stops me, and he goes, "Hey, are you Mark K?" And I go, "I am actually." I didn't do my line because I was wow. in a hurry. And he goes, hey, I love your show. I listen. My wife, can I get a picture? I want to just, you know, so I go, sure. So we take a selfie. Well, my kids are in the car watching this whole thing go down, right? <laughs> they see me go in. They see me stop. They see me shake the guy's hand. We chit-chat a little bit. We take the selfie. And then I exit the restaurant, and I get in the car. And as soon as I open the, the door, both my kids in unison look at me and go, that depends. Do you like the show? <laughs> And I go, I didn't say it this time. They're like, sure, Dad, sure, you didn't say it. But um, so they kind of clown me. That's hilarious. Yeah, they know my, they know my mo. They know my wow. mo. Wow. Anyway, but I would just say maybe when you're on your way out today, uh, check for that upside down pineapple on your car. Make I will. sure. Thank you. Make sure, that, make sure that it's not there. Uh, this is Trip in Middleburg. Trip, how are you, sir? What do you want to say today? <clears throat> well, I'm I'm the uh, president of the uh, Eversense Club. The Eversense. Oh uh, yeah. Eversense Joe Biden yeah, was elected. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, uh, yesterday was the first for me. Ever since you changed out my fuel pump, my speakers are blown. I'm like, holy crap, that, that can't happen. But what, what I'm telling you is that ever since Joe Biden's been in office, uh, my automobile insurance, just my automobile insurance, went from $67 a month to $107 a month. My homeowner's insurance went from... Eighty-seven, uh, yeah, eight thousand. Uh, I'm sorry, eight hundred and seventy dollars a month or a year to twelve hundred and fifty dollars a year. What the heck is going on? Well, I think you said you, ever since Joe Biden's president, everything's way more expensive and also less valuable. Hey, thanks so much for calling. We really, uh, we really do appreciate it. Eight five five nine four zero Mark is our number. You know, I was thinking, ever since Joe Biden became president, we may not be able to give away these prize packs anymore. You gotta start charging. If you win a prize pack, <laughs> we may actually have to charge. It may just, you may just be winning the opportunity to pay to for pay a prize for pack. A prize pack. <laughs> Would you like a prize pack? Great. That'll be seven ninety nine. Please Venmo us, and then we'll get it out. <laughs> We're not at that point yet, folks. But, uh, but you know, we might be soon if uh, if Joe Biden stays in office. All right, are you guys ready to play some? How dumb are they? Yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah perfect. Can't here we go. wait. This is a, uh, hold on, I don't like this music. I want to play this other music here. It's a little more. I'm calm. sweating. There we go. We'll go this one. All right, here we go. <laughs> how dumb are they? This is a game where we try to figure out how dumb Hannah and Jay are uh, by asking them questions about various categories and seeing who knows more about, you know, well, general stuff. Yeah. And all you have to do to win this game is to guess whether or not, based on the category, Hannah and or Jay will get the question right. And uh, first up, it looks like we've got Susan in Green Cove Springs. Oh. What happened to Susan? I don't know. All right. She got scared. Susan, Susan, call back. Nick is in Grand Junction. Wait. Uh. How's it going? Hey, Nick. How you doing? 
Oh, uh, doing pretty good, man. How are you? Oh, we're doing great. Are, are, are you ready to play some How Dumb Are They? I am, but uh, hey, man, I had a real quick question. Okay. Uh, can I get a Remember Mar-a-Lago t-shirt instead of the normal Mark K Show t-shirt? You can get a Remember Mar-a-Lago t-shirt, but only at markkshop.com. Uh, I give uh, you, I give you Hannah's, but of course she doesn't have one. Or at least we also just don't have them in studio, yeah, which is why Mark is saying that. We, we have various different warehouses and facilities all over the place, mm -hmm. and really also I don't have a T-shirt. You know that. I just have a sweatshirt. Well, you don't. I mean, I don't know that you have any of it because you're not wearing any of it. <laughs> but but that's okay. We'll hook you up with something nice, Nick. Don't worry about. it. Also, you have to win first. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, okay. I've right, won right. twice. I like so Nick. Oh. I got this. Oh, all right. Well, Nick's fine. He's like, all right, I got this down. Uh, you are going to be playing against Susan in Green Cove, and it looks like we got her right there. Hey, Susan, how's it going? Oh, just lovely. How y'all doing? Oh, so good, Susan. Are you ready to how's play some How Dumb Are You? I am ready. All right. All right. So once again, folks, we give you the category. All you have to do is say yes or no. Hannah and or Jay will know the answer based solely on the category, and then the hard work's up for them. Uh, Nick, we're going to start with you, okay? All righty. All right. The first category is for Hannah. Okay. And it is <laughs> it is drugs. <laughs> drugs. The category is drugs, Nick. Do you think Hannah will or will not know the correct answer to the question about drugs? Well, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to go with a not. You're going to go with no, she won't. No, she won't. Because she's that pure and innocent. Well, not that pure and innocent, oh. but, you know, drugs encompasses uh, a lot of things. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, Hannah, are you ready for your question? Sure. Here we go. Crank, tweak, shards, and whiz are all street names for which drug? Um, I am going to guess um, heroin. Heroin. Yeah. Heroin. Crank, tweak, shards, and whiz are all names for heroin. I don't know. I mean, I, that's what I'm guessing. Man, there's a whole bunch of drug addicts listening to the show right now going, no, it's Crystal Beth. I don't know. Yeah, Aren't they close? It's Crystal. Each other. Okay, no. I don't uh, know. Nick, congratulations. <laughs> Hannah got it wrong, which means you got it right. Good job. Good. I mean, I'm okay with yeah. actually getting that question wrong. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Susan, are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. This question is for Jay, and the category is wrestling. <laughs> okay. Oh, goodness. Wrestling. <laughs> Or wrestling. Wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. Sorry, I should have said wrestling. Wrestling. Will he or won't he know the answer to the question about wrestling, Susan? I'll say yes, he will. Yes, he will know the question about wrestling. All right, Jay, are you ready? Sure. Which wrestler's finishing move <laughs> was known as the Tombstone Pile Driver? I'm going to say The Undertaker. You're going to say the Undertaker's mm -hmm. finishing move was the Tombstone Pile Driver. Yes. That is correct. Wow. Yay. And Susan, you said he would know the answer to that, and so you also yes, get a point. Yes, I did. Nicely done. We're all tied up. All right. Nick, are you ready? Yes, I am. We are sticking with Jay, and Jay, right. your next category is mythology. Okay. Mythology. Nick, will he or won't he know the answer to the question about mythology. Uh, I'm going to say no again. You're going to say no again. Is it Greek mythology? Yep, Nick, Nick, plays, Nick, Nick likes to go the negative. <laughs> He's like, ah, you know, I'm betting against the house here. All right, uh, Jay, you ready for your question? Let's do it. In Greek mythology, oh. what was Medusa's <laughs> hair made out of? That would be snakes. That would be snakes Dope. is correct, which means... Nick, I'm sorry, no points awarded because you didn't uh, you didn't think you know that one. Yeah, because Medusa. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Medusa had sex with Poseidon in uh, Athena's temple, and Minerva was all like, "The Minerva, you <laughs> to do that." <laughs> so she turned Minerva her hair. You turned her hair to snakes. All right, uh, Susan, back to you, and also back to Hannah. Are you guys ready? Yeah, ready. All right, Ooh. Susan. Hannah's next category is arachnids. Spiders. Arach. <laughs> The category is arachnids, okay. which, yes, is another name for six, I'm sorry, eight-legged insectoids. Okay. What do you think, Susan? Will she or won't she know the answer to the question about arachnids? I think Hannah's pretty smart. I'm going to say yes, she will. Okay. All right. All Come right. on, Hannah. <laughs> I right. would have said to say no, but that's just me. Here we go. <laughs> hey, could you please quit being so self-deprecating? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, here we go. 
the markings on the back of a black widow spider. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, I'm sorry, the marking on the back of a black widow spider is a red mark in what shape? A red mark in a, I'm going to guess diamond shape. In a diamond shape. Yeah. Oh, Susan already Ooh. knows that's wrong. See, Susan already knows. <laughs> like, uh... Susan, do you know the right answer? I think it's an hourglass or a violin. Uh, hourglass, I think. Yeah, which is correct, which means Hannah was incorrect, which means you're both wrong. So there you go. Sorry. That's all tied. All right, here we go. Uh, Nick, back to you. Are you ready? All right, I got it. Here we go. We're sticking with Hannah once again. The category is TV game shows. TV game shows. Will she or won't she know the answer in the category of TV game shows? I uh, like. I'm not to stick with no. I think that's the smartest answer you could stick with. You know what? You gotta, <laughs> yeah. if you like, can, I'm pretty sure yeah. Hannah's not the top mark. You, of, gotta, uh, you can call Tails 22 times. You're bound to get it once. All right, Nick, here yeah. we go. The answer is no, she won't know the question about TV game shows. <laughs> Hannah, Yeah. what game show features contestants yelling no whammies? What game show features contestants yelling no whammies? Whammies. Uh, no whammies. No whammies. I'm going to say the game show called No Whammies. I don't know. You're going to say the name? I, uh, I've never heard of this game show in my life where you yell out, No Whammies. Big money. No whammies. Big money. Big money. Big no money. Stop. Stop. Big money. No whammies. Big money. You're calling it big money? Big money. No whammies? No. <laughs> New phone. Who this? I don't know. It's uh, uh, I'm gonna say like um. It's too late. You've, you're like been wrong nine times in the past 25 seconds. I think it's Bammers. It is press your press luck. Your I've window. never yeah. heard of that game show in my life. Big money, no whammies. Big money, and then the whammies dance around and go. Yeah, I, I got wait, it. is that like an Oompa Loompa? What's a what? What's a big whammy? Oh a my whammy god. Is there anyway? Never mind. Okay. Nick, uh, you got yourself a point, Nick. You're taking the lead. Good job. All right, All Susan. Right. Susan, you ready? I'm ready. Back to you. Back to Jay. The category is baking. <laughs> baking. Oh, goodness. What do you think, Susan? Will Jay know the answer to the question about baking? Oh, goodness. I'm going to say no. Yeah, it's okay to say no. You don't have to. You're not going to hurt yeah. anyone's yeah, feelings. Yeah, fine. No. All right. Uh, okay. No is your answer. All right, Jay, you ready? I am. The pattern of crisscrossing stripes of pastry. I'm sorry. The pattern of crisscrossing stripes of pastry on top of a pie is known as what? <laughs> um, crisscrossing. I have no idea. What is it? You guys can't is even come it? up with it. She's like, the game shows no whammies. The answer is crisscrossing. Is uh, it? In, oh, inter, uh, interlacing. Hold on. Is it? What is it? What's your answer? Interlacing. Interlacing is yes. your answer. Yes. Is it? A Hannah, I haven't yet said if it's right or wrong yet. Okay. You have to wait. <laughs> it is not interlacing, which means, Susan, congratulations, uh, congratulations, you get a point. Hannah, did you want to answer the question? I want to ask if what I'm going to answer is correct. So you want to answer the question? Yeah, is it lattice? That is correct. Yeah. Yeah, but nobody gets a point for that because it wasn't. Why didn't you ask me a baking question? Well, because that's the whole point of the game. All right, uh, here we go. Sticking with Jay, Nick, are you ready? I am. The next question category is the iPhone. <laughs> the nope, iPhone. He's definitely he's definitely not gonna have that. Well, as one of those green text <laughs> dudes, yeah, he's probably not gonna know this. All right. our messages. Jay, are you ready? Hey man, like I'm on Verizon as well, so it's cool. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm what on, does the carrier have to do with I, what kind of phone you have? I'm on Verizon as well, and I have an iPhone. I'm not even on Verizon. <laughs> oh, oh, well, oh, right. like, uh, I have an Android too, so there All right. you go. Here we go. <laughs> Fun fact, Nick, you can have Androids on pretty much any network. All right, here we go. iPhone, yeah. here's the question. Listen carefully. Jay, he said you will not know the answer. Let's see if he's right for another point. What is the pill-shaped area surrounding the camera and sensors on the new iPhone 14 called? What? <laughs> the the what, what is What is the pill-shaped area surrounding the camera and sensors of the new iPhone 14 called? The case or the cover. The case or the cover is incorrect. It is the Ooh. dynamic island. Who would know that? What? I did. The dynamic. It's a, you haven't seen the commercial? It's all, only on every five seconds. No, I, don't I have, haven't. I don't have cable. <clears throat> you don't have cable? <laughs> no. But do you have Not Verizon? Either. No. Oh. 
Never mind then. Uh, all right, so Nick, you got yourself another point. Nicely done. Susan, you need this one to tie. We go back to Hannah. Are you ready? Just guess no, Susan. Ready. Here we here we go. The category is China. Oh, China. Hannah totally knows China. She's got this. In what? <laughs> Look at this. I'm crying. <laughs> Susan, will Hannah or won't Hannah know the answer to the question about Broad China? Category. I'm going to say yes. You're going to say yes? What? Yes. Come on, Hannah. Okay, Susan. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. Can I Google? Hannah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Hannah. Yes, Mark. In what city would you find Victoria Harbor? Beijing. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> the answer was Hong Kong. Okay. And uh, we're out of time, which that means was a 50, 50 guess with on a my score part. of three to two, congratulations, Nick. You are I'm a sorry. big today. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, nicely done. You are very welcome. We're going to send you a Mark K Show prize pack for your Remember Mar a Lago shirt. Just remember, you got to go to markkshop.com. And uh, Susan, the great Aww. game. You did a great job. Hang on, everybody. We will be right back with more Mark K Show after this. That was hilarious. That was my favorite. Also, that was so broad. China as the whole category? China. Just one country. <laughs> I mean, there's no more broad than baking. Baking is a much more broad country. <laughs> baking could be breads, pastries, cakes, cookies, yeah. pies. China's just China. Yeah. Yeah. I still feel like it's more broad. It could be the people of it's China. It's abroad. It could be the food of China. It could be, like, it could literally be the food of China. If it were the China. food of China, it would have said Chinese food eh. would have been the category. Yeah, but then you have to wonder, is it American? Is it Chinese? Uh, when are we doing Hannah's Hot Takes? How would Chinese food be American? Like, the Chinese food that we have in America is different than the Chinese food that they have in China. But it's all still called Chinese food. Okay, anyway, when are we doing Hannah's Hot Takes? I don't know if we are anymore. I don't like your attitude. Oh, that's okay. That was a great score. <laughs> now, or, or, or we're going to do it for an hour. An hour? One or the other. I'm, I'm sweating. <laughs> uh, no, that was fun. Good questions. That was fun. I like that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jess. I don't. I don't have cable. Also, I love that I told Susan to guess no. Yeah, and she didn't. And she's like, "Yes," and I was like, "Susan." I mean, really, you were trying to help her out. I was. You can't really. And then I heard China, and I was like, "Yeah, hundred percent, still no." <laughs> I can't believe you threw in that self-deprecating comment. Well, you were being self-deprecating. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Whiskey, you are welcome. Now, I am subscribed to two people on Rumble. You and Mark. You weren't subscribed to Whiskey? I was only subscribed to you. Weren't you on Whiskey's podcast? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. 1981. I just read yours. Wait a minute. <laughs> Apparently, you're not supposed to cook chicken in NyQuil. Have people been cooking Since chicken? when? Chicken in NyQuil. Apparently, that's a TikTok trend. Ew. Wait, don't don't look it up because I'm going to talk about this. This is disgusting. Don't Google it because you always Google stories before I do them. I asked if I could Google the, the don't China Google. question. Yeah, don't Google anything. <laughs> I love this. It's like, yeah, Google it. <laughs> And I should have known the Black Widow question because we had a ton of Black Widow spiders um, yeah. in Washington. Yeah, you should have known that. I know. I like how when you answered Diamond, she went, oh. I know. Because like, she knew oh, the answer wasn't Diamond. Okay. That's funny. That was my favorite part of the day so far. It was good. It was real good. <laughs> and it's like the exact opposite of a Diamond, by the way. <laughs> An hourglass? Yeah, because yeah, like, di right. diamonds are like this, and an hourglass is like, like that. Like yeah, that. <laughs> look at that. You were maybe you're just dyslexic when it comes to shapes. Maybe you're shape dyslexic. What's that called? Shaplexic. No. Shape lexic. Shape lexic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we had a ton of these where I lived in Washington. Uh, but I couldn't remember it because I haven't lived there since I was fourteen. Uh, but I remember uh, when I, I think it was one of my mom's friends or one of my dad's friends, but they got bit by um, a black widow. A black widow, and, it was, and they died. 
No, they didn't end up oh. dying, but they probably lost a, they lost, a limb. Uh, I don't know if they ended up. I don't remember. I was like probably eight eight ish years old, but they got bit on their arm, mm. and it. I want to say it turned into gangrene. I remember mm-hmm. it being like rotting flesh. No, mm-hmm. that's horrible. It was horrible. I think it's the same thing if you get bit by a, um, a rattlesnake. I think it's actually like worse than it, isn't it? Like with the Black Widow. No, it's definitely. I think it is worse, but if you get bit but by like a rattlesnake, it's very similar. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm looking to see if. Yeah, so I'm looking at, and it looks just like it was horrible. It's horrible. It's one of my like fears is to be bit by a Black Widow. No. Mm. Rattlesnake. Oh. I wasn't ever scared of spiders, which is crazy. Because mm. this black widow bite would be even worse. But I was always terrified of uh, snakes. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Did you get my email? Did you get my email? HDAT winner? No, 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 no. The, the one before that. <sighs> Don't say it out loud. Is it oh, not me? Got it. No. Got it. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Why did you, you are laugh welcome. like Squidward just now? <laughs> SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Oh, all right. <laughs> This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. BT Dubs, while we're talking about breaking, uh, while we're talking about baking, there's breaking baking news. Um, a NyQuil marinated <laughs> chicken is apparently dangerous, the FDA would like you to know. <laughs> Who's marinating their, what? Apparently, TikTokers are jumping on the latest craze, and the FDA is warning them that NyQuil marinated chicken is a dangerous thing. It sounds as disgusting as it is dangerous. They call it sleepy chicken. Some people say it helps with cold symptoms. Uh, The thing is, it's also unsafe. Meds that are boiled can be dangerous because they're much more concentrated and powerful and change properties, so says the FDA. What's more, just smelling it can be dangerous. Folks at the FDA say inhaling vapors during the cooking process causes the drug to enter the cook system, causing potential lung damage. People who are doing this are often using way more than the recommended dosages, and that's a big problem. So do not, and I've seen photos, basically what these people are doing is they're taking chicken breasts and they're marinating them in bottles of NyQuil, which looks gross, and uh, apparently now when you start cooking it or boiling it, the fumes go up your nose, and then, uh, you know, they the, the FDA says that these TikTokers who are making sleepy chicken with NyQuil they say it's they, they call it dangerous and a health hazard. I just call it natural selection. <laughs> I agree. It's also <laughs> disgusting. Who I mean, who, who I comes up with these thought, things? Yeah, who thought of this? Like, I thought the NyQuil was there to remedy your cold systems anyway. Why do you need to mix it with They're chicken? Like, you know what? I need some protein with this. <laughs> <laughs> sure do. Not <laughs> only I need extra concentrated NyQuil. Not only do I have trouble sleeping, but I'm very hungry. <laughs> so let's take the NyQuil. Let's knock it out in one step. Yeah, uh, deep fried chicken. Not uh, sleepy out, chicken. Literally. <laughs> Eight five five nine four zero. Mark is our number. Quick break. More Mark K show coming up. That sounds utterly I lo- disgusting. I love that. Natural selection. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that could be the minute. Oof. I, the, I agree with you, Or Jay. the 30 seconds. We'll make it 30 seconds. <laughs> Whatever the length is, we'll just do that. Or just stop caring about the length. You know. That's what she said. Yeah. Uh, ew. <laughs> uh, I just want to know. I agree with you, Jay. Who comes up with these things? Like the, what was the one? Was it the Benadryl? Oh, here. Where people know. were like... <laughs> I've done this in the past, and usually I use about, oh. you know, four thirds of the bottle. And uh, if it's your first time doing this, you can get away with using about a fifth. Season that NyQuil in there just at the right temperature. You don't want to let it sit there and sizzle for about, you know, let five it sit to there and mire night. Make sure That's you're constantly flipping over the disgusting. You don't want to give one side more attention than the other. Oh, sometimes the steam really makes you sleepy. Mm. Oh, oh. 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 Yeah, because he's getting high. Right there. <laughs> All right, and you can go ahead and turn it off. Ooh, yeah, that's steam, baby. Turn the unused right back into the that. No. Oh, no. And boom, not cool chicken. That is. Bone apple tea. 
Bone apple teeth. Bone appetite. Yeah. I want to. Is that another challenge that was on a uh, TikTok? The Tide Pods. Yeah. yeah, that was the Tide Pods, and then the Benadryl one. You know. Or Claire. Treat these women. She got a plan. She definitely got a plan. You may not even wake up after this. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Oh my god, that is too funny. That is disgusting. That chicken was green. Also, it was uncooked. Yeah. Ugh. And then they put the uncooked uh, NyQuil chicken juice. Yeah, with the chicken juice back in the bottle. Back in the bottle. Was, I think that guy was being comedic. I. I hope. I I want to believe that. <laughs> but I, I want I, to believe that too. But, but I don't think that he was. <laughs> Oh. I may have to take the sweatshirt off because I'm sweating a little bit. So, which proves that it works. Good. Um, also, I love that he's like, ooh, fumes. I'm getting a little sleepy. <laughs> he's like, bro, what? <laughs> Yikes. Whiskey goes, TikTok is China's way of defeating us from within. Mm hmm. That yeah. is true. That is true. Oh, man. Jess says, yeah, let the libs get all shot up with mRNA and let them eat NyQuil chicken and we'll get rid of these idiots. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to look up the dumbest challenges. On TikTok? On TikTok. Nice. 23 craziest TikTok challenges so far. I found them and the ordeals that they've caused. Uh, gorilla, the gorilla glue girl. Yeah, do you remember that? <laughs> Oof. DIY vampire fangs. I don't think I ever heard of those. Mm, I don't know. Mm. Oh, it was a super glue fiasco. They were super gluing costume vampire fangs to their teeth. Ew. Face wax challenge. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Uh, not going to read the next one. What? The Five. erection cream pout plumper? Yeah. Ew. <laughs> Interesting. Cereal challenge? Oh, I saw the cereal challenge. I don't see that being too much of a problem. You just pour the cereal in your mouth into the milk, right? A choking hazard. Ugh, they're adults. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> That's dumb. Skull breaker challenge. I know. I was like, what the heck? Anything that has the word challenge in it. Don't do it. Ah, oh, there's the Benadryl challenge. It. Yeah. It it involves taking enough Benadryl to hallucinate and posting the footage on the video sharing platform. But a girl died from it at 15 years old. <gasps> the pee your pants challenge. Ew. What's the poop challenge? Gross. Mm -hmm. Ew. I would, I would whoop somebody. Uh huh. If that would that that happened in my house. A thousand percent. Also, uh, the what poop kid, challenge? Yeah, oh. you don't want to hear it. It's disgusting. The flash mob. Verbal abuse challenge. I know. I read that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one actually might be pretty funny. Yeah. The coronavirus challenge. That's funny. Yeah. Licking sure. airplane toilet seats. Okay, just kidding. Did you uh, did you ever see the video of a um, guy walking through the convenience store, and he's sitting there coughing, and he's got like a like a six pack of Corona, and he's sitting there coughing, and he's like, "It's Corona time!" and the uh. and the woman flips out and runs away. <laughs> no, but that's so funny. So there was somebody who was being a, a real Karen uh, in a. I want to say it was like a, a Pier One, and so this other woman. Goes and coughs on her. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Do you remember that? Oh, that was crazy, yeah. And, like, she got arrested or something. Like, remember she got charged with something? Like, I can't remember what it was, but she got charged with something. Probably for like assault. Yeah, I think that might have been what it was for coughing on her. And I was like, oh, my gosh. She, like, wasn't even, like, yes, it's rude. But also the other woman was being a Karen. It's, it's <laughs> and a, it was hilarious. It's the same thing if uh, if you spit on somebody, you can get charged with assault. Ew. 
mean, I feel like spitting's a little different. I mean, yeah, coughing on someone's disgusting. But if you're being a Karen, I wouldn't do it. But I could see why you might, you know? What? No, like, I I would never cough on someone intentionally, but I can see why if somebody's being horrible enough, you might just jokingly, like... <laughs> yeah. I mean, before 2020, it was no big deal, but... Yeah. And I think this was in 2020 that it happened. But it it made, like, big news. What's the milk crate challenge? Oh, that was another one. <gasps> oh, I remember this one. I feel like people were getting severely injured. Oof. I want to say it's pretty much probably going to be the same thing as the, uh, which one was it, the, the skull challenge? Uh, maybe. I mean, they skull like. Skull breaker challenge. They stack them up like this, like in a pyramid, and then you try to walk all the way up and all the way down. Oh, uh, you're trying to, you're trying to do like a, a Super Mario thing. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> all right. Five seconds. And we're back. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Thanks so much for joining us today, folks. We are so excited that you're here. On the way this hour, we've got some American Trivia Warrior Plus. Uh, we'll do Hannah's hot takes first, though. A couple of uh, other stories I wanted to get to before we get out of here because the time just, it keeps on ticking, man. It just keeps going. It, move, it moves faster and faster, it seems, almost every single day. And there's a couple of things that you should be aware of. First of all, um, there is a uh, there's a lot going on with the election there. Politically, the tide is turning. Uh, you know, things are changing. And it looks like... It looks like in a lot of these races that used to be Democrat runaways, um, it's getting a lot closer than it ever has been before. And that always happens. What are we, 50 days out from the election, just a little less uh, than 50 days out from the election. And what happens is these midterms start to tighten up, something that the Democrats hate because they believe that they're in a position to take the Senate. And if you look at all of the polls, and I don't look at all the polls, I look at the average of all the polls. And if you look to see where everyone is, it seems that a lot of the polls that were supposed to be runaways for the Democrats that were going to give them or, or allow them to retain control of the Senate, they don't seem to be the runaways that they used to be. The biggest races in Georgia, where the uh, Atlanta Journal-Constitution just released a poll saying that both uh, Stacey Abrams and Raphael Warnock trail significantly in the polls. Stacey Abrams down by eight points um, uh, in the governor's race, and Raphael Warnock losing to Herschel Walker by about three or four points. Herschel Walker, it seems, will be able to uh, turn Georgia red again by taking back at least one of the Senate seats that they won in 2020. The other one, of course, going to John Ossoff. So Raphael Warnock may be one of the shortest senators in Georgia history if these polls are to believe and if Herschel Walker can maintain and keep up the momentum that he has. There is going to be a debate, and Herschel Walker uh, tweeted something out about the debate, and he basically called himself, what was he? He called himself a, a stupid country boy. He's, uh, he said, I'm not that smart. I'm just a, a country boy. Don't expect too much out of me. Herschel Walker is trying a novel approach in his race against Senator Raphael Warnock in Georgia. Don't expect too much out of me. I'm just not that smart. This is from CNN. Walker's new spin comes specifically in reference to next month's planned debate between the two candidates. I'm a country boy, and he's that preacher. He's a smart man, wears these nice suits, Walker said of Warnock at a recent press conference filmed by the Savannah Morning News. So he's going to show up and embarrass me at the debate October the 14th, and I'm just waiting. I'll show up and I'm going to do my best. Now, a lot of folks are claiming this is Herschel Walker downplaying it, you know, trying to say, hey, look, lower expectations. And then if something good happens, well, then everyone's going to be blown away. This is probably true. And it's also a tactic that has been made popular by President Joe Biden. Joe Biden did this his whole campaign. There was a speech that Joe Biden gave. Uh, it was right after he, uh, right after the election, he came out and they said, look, if Joe Biden makes this speech and he doesn't flub, we're going to be fine. Joe Biden's got to, he's got to nail this speech. With Joe Biden, a debate performance that wasn't a total train wreck was a win because nobody expected anything better from Joe Biden. If Joe Biden goes out there and just messes up once or twice, 
if Joe Biden just walks away saying one or two stupid or creepy things. Watch me. Yeah. Watch me. If Joe Biden can get away without just totally demoralizing and embarrassing the Democrat Party, then that's a win because nobody expects him to do anything else. Nobody expects Joe Biden to be a good speaker, to make intelligent thoughts, to not embarrass himself or others. Nobody expects Joe Biden to not stumble over something or stutter or say the wrong thing or forget somebody's name or call Kamala the president instead of the vice president. Nobody expects any, we expect the opposite from Biden. So if Biden can actually get out there and remember what the Declaration of Independence was. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the, go, you know the, you know the thing. Yeah, if he can get off of the stage uh, without yelling gay, gay, gay bathhouses to Anderson Cooper. Gay, gay, gay bathhouses. And every, it's all about round the clock sex. It's all, come on, man. If he can do an interview with a black talk show host and not bring up the fact that black people who don't vote for him aren't black. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump. And you ain't black. Yeah, if he can do all that, then, man, that's chalk up a win for Joe Biden. Herschel Walker may be stealing that uh, playbook, which, oh, you know, all the power to him. Let people think he's just a brain-dead athlete who's been tackled too many times to know any better. Let him think he's just this good old country boy who's not that smart and is going up against that big city slicker preacher in those nice suits. Let him think that he's going to get the floor wiped with him, but he's going to do his best. And then if he comes out there and he does good, if he does okay, if he gives like a C plus B minus performance, that's a huge win. He Raphael Warnock is supposed to be a great debater. He's a preacher for crying out loud. He's a doctor. He's out there. He he's a city slicker. He wears suits. He know he's a silver tongued devil. That Raphael Warnock. We're expecting him to be amazing. Nobody expects Herschel Walker to be good at this at all. So if he is just moderately okay. That is a huge win for him. That's a huge win for the Republicans, and it's a huge win for Georgia. But there's more races. In Wisconsin, uh, Mandela Barnes is in a dead-even uh, tie with, John with uh, what's his name, Johnson. Mandela Barnes was supposed to be running away with this because Johnson's an ultra-maga Trump supporter, crazy QAnon conspiracy theorist. theorist. And, you know, if you look at the other races around the country, Arizona, Adam Laxalt was supposed to be buried, but he is neck and neck. In Ohio, J.D. Vance wasn't supposed to be doing anything, and he's running away with it. Got a four-point lead over Tim Ryan now. The Republicans have some pretty strong contenders, it seems, in the end. And then there's Pennsylvania. Then there's Pennsylvania, where John Fetterman slash John Fetterwoman is running against Dr. Oz. Two troubled candidates, neither one really the best one for the state, neither one really anyone's first choice on either side of the aisle, but a very important seat. It's a seat that the Republicans need to maintain because there's an outgoing Republican senator, and it's a seat that the Democrats would love to pick up and believe that they had a, a chance to do exactly that, especially when Dr. Oz won the primary. Then came John Fetterman's stroke. Then came John Fetterman's speeches. Then came John Fetterman yelling, John Fetterwoman. Then came John Fetterman saying, I'm going to allow one third of dangerous, violent, murderous criminals out of prison to go back home with their families and their communities where they belong, to go back to the families and the communities where they committed those heinous, violent and murderous crimes, uh, because they're going to welcome them back with open arms. John Fetterman is is left of Bernie Sanders when it comes to kooky socialists. Don't uh, take my word for it. Just look at his hoodie collection. At least Bernie Sanders puts on a suit and tries to pretend to be a politician. John Fetterman doesn't even do that. He may not be able to even with the, the problems going on in his head. And again, that's not digging on a guy with a stroke. It's just telling you this guy recently suffered a stroke. And he does not seem to have recovered fully. Not to the point where he could be representing a state as large and important as Pennsylvania in the United States Senate. But that race was supposed to be a runaway. And in fact, just about a month ago, John Fetterman was leading by eight points. That lead has been cut in half by four points. Some, if you look at the uh, polling, have it as close as two points, and some even have it as almost a dead heat. Which means, don't believe the Democrats when they tell you the Senate will remain in their control. Don't believe the polls or the media when they say it looks like the Republicans can win the House handedly, but the Senate is going to remain in Democrat control. Don't believe Mitch McConnell when he says, Wow, well, we'll probably have a candidate selection. It would look like I'm preparing for the Republicans to remain the minority. Don't, rem don't believe any of those people. 
don't believe them because the only poll that matters, the only vote that matters, the only thing that matters is coming up on November the 8th. And the other thing you need to realize is that it doesn't matter who is polled. What matters is who votes. And when you when you look at what's happening in Pennsylvania, when you look at what's happening in Florida, for example, where where people think Val Demings has a chance against a longtime Senator Marco Rubio. The reason people go to the polls is not to vote for a senator or a congresswoman. A lot of these Senate candidates would like you to think that the reason people go to the polls is to vote for a president or a governor. Nobody's running for president this year, but a lot of people have gubernatorial races. And in Pennsylvania, there's a lot of fed up folks that did not like the way it went down during the pandemic who want to vote a Republican into office. They want Doug Mastriano to be the Republican governor of their state, and they will go there and vote for him. And when they do, they're not going to they're not going to say, you know what? I love what the Republicans are doing nationwide. I love what Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott and, and Governor Stitt in Oklahoma. I love what all those folks are doing. But I'm going to vote for a Democrat for Senate because that John Fetterman, he just seems like he has a good head on his shoulders. Which I, Sorry, that was no pun. No, I didn't mean that. No pun intended. Uh, and the same thing happens here in Florida. Everybody's going to go eager, eager to vote for Ron DeSantis, super governor, the most popular governor this state has ever had, the most effective governor this state has ever had. They're going to be so excited to vote for that guy. They're not going to leave him hanging high and dry by throwing Val Demings in there as the senator. It just doesn't happen. If the governor is a strong governor in Arizona, for example, Carrie Lake, she will win that gubernatorial race. There's, in my opinion, no reason to believe that, uh, that what's her name, Hobbs, or is going to uh, be able to pull out a win for the governor of, Pencil of um, Arizona. And when they go out to vote for Kerry Lake for governor, they are not going to throw a vote toward the Democrat candidate, I believe. I know the polls will tell you that Mark Kelly's very popular. I know the polls will tell you Blake Masters is unpopular. But those... MAGA loving white supremacist danger to the Republic Republicans who are going to go vote for Carrie Lake to be their next governor. There's no way in H E double hockey sticks they're voting for a Democrat to go to the Senate to keep that firmly in, in Democrat control. The only poll, the only poll that matters is the poll on November the 8th, which is just a handful, five weeks away. 855-940-MARK is our number. Coming up, ladies and gentlemen, Hannah's Hot Takes. Don't go anywhere. We'll do it right after this. Yo. Yo, yo. Did you know yes. that John Fetterman is six foot eight? Yeah, he's a big dude. He's massive. Yeah. Also, he kind of looks like a cartoon character. Yeah. Like, his face doesn't look like it's real. Yeah. Is that mean? Yeah. I wasn't meaning that mean. I mean. just mean he doesn't look... He looks like... Like what a, like a good artist would draw. A uh, caricature. Yeah, he looks kind of like a, like a caricature. He, he looks kind of like a, what was the name of the guy, the mob Shrek. boss in Marvel? Oh. Kingpin. Uh, what Kingpin? Yeah, he could be Kingpin. Wait, let me look. I don't think I know what Kingpin looks like. He looks like John Fetterman. Just a lot bigger. Um. With wait, yeah, that's totally true. But even more like pronounced features, you know? Rhonda says he looks more like Lurch. <laughs> Lurch had hair, though. You rang. What I is wrong with my I Dropbox? could see a combination of Shrek and Kingpin for, um, for John mm. Fetterman. His wife must be super tall, too, because I saw a picture of them standing next to each other. Giselle, her name's Giselle. Um, and she, like, comes up to, like, right here on him. And I'm... Five eight. He's six eight. He is so tall. Rachel. What? She said J Money's big juicy birch golden booty. Oh, mm. I saw that. <laughs> J hey. Fire, you're bringing back. Old hey things. Siri, go to birchgold.com/mark. You're welcome, Rachel. <laughs> that was funny. Shoot, my earbud my feels computer? hot, but I can't tell if it is. Your what? My earbud. Your earbud? My my earbud. Oh, your earbud. I said earbud. Does he smell children too? I don't, you know, that's a good question. He also has an interesting rectangle tattoo on his forearm. 
It's literally just like a like a black rectangle. Hmm. Weird, right? What if that was like a tattoo cover up and he had gotten like an ex girlfriend's name and like they didn't want to come up with something creative? So Probably what it was. So instead of something creative, it's just a black rectangle. It's probably what it was. You think so? <laughs> and like then he just looks like super hip and he's like, no, this is just how I'm expressing myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm done. I'm done. Are you though? Yeah. That was really good. Oh, wait, Jay Fire, were you not referring to the throwback? He's because he says he said he looks like a dill space dough. Which do you remember when you talked about like the dill flavored dough in New York? I do. do you, yeah, so I thought that that was the throwback, but oh, then it. Jay Fire didn't know what I was talking about, so I guess I guess not. Oh my gosh, yes. Squeak messaged me and she goes redacted <laughs> in reference to the square or the the rectangle. <laughs> oh exactly. wait a minute. What? Which which hand is it on? Is it his left hand or his left wrist? I think it's his, his, his right. Oh, it was never his, mind. Never mind. I could be wrong. Let me look. No, I, it's a, it's right arm, right here. Okay. It is massive though. Like it's like yeah, from I see here. It. Oh, you see it? Mm -hmm. I was just trying to see if I could see what it was before it was a big. A big massive rectangle. Redacted tattoo. Like what is that? It is what it is. Whoa, there's a picture of him holding a cell what? phone, and it looks like the cell phone is, like, miniature. <laughs> Fisher-Price? Fisher yeah. It My looks My first cell phone? Fake. Federer looks like a hunchback of Notre Dame. Stop. You guys, stop. This wasn't meant to ruin. I feel bad. Oh, look at this. There Wait. it is. What's underneath John Fetterman's blacked out tattoo? Wait. We now know, and it's creepy. Oh, what is it? What is it? Let me let me look. Hmm. I might have to have that for you after Hannah's hot takes. Dag nab it. I'm gonna give a conspiracy on that during Hannah's hot takes. <laughs> what if it's swastikas? Mm, I don't know. I'll let you know next break. Okay. This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K, 855-940. Mark is our number, 855-940-6275. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today, folks. We are so excited that you're here. And, uh, you know, we, we don't we don't want to waste any minute. And we have so little time here. Uh, I mean, three hours seems like a long time. But really, really, when you take out all of the news, when you take out all the information, when you take out the stories about our personal lives, when you take out the games, it leaves us with very little time left over. Yeah. Um, so we want to use every single minute we can. And one thing that we definitely want to do is we want to uh, give time for Hannah's hot takes because I really enjoy this section uh, section segment. Uh, Jane, I know, likes it as well. Hannah, section of time. Hannah thinks it's fluff. I do not think it's fluff. I think that's true. I think you called it fluff once. I, it was August your... 23rd. Look at that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> August 23rd, 2022. I just meant it was a lot of Hannah all yeah. at once. I mean, Hannah, Fluff, but they're, they are interchangeable phrases. From this time is to good time. training for me. That's exactly the way. That's why we do it. We're always, look, you know, we're always, I don't know if you saw the game yesterday, but when it became a blowout between the Buffalo Bills and the team that they blew out, the Tennessee Titans, mm -hmm. they all just took out their starters and they let the uh, second string play uh -huh. because those guys needed, they needed a little, you know, they needed some practice. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, God forbid you have to need to take out the first string here at the uh, Mark K show, the second stringers would need to step up. Right. Jay, I'm not so worried about it. But Hannah definitely uh, could use a little, a little bit of extra practice. So we're going to put her in. We're going to give her 30 seconds and random topics. And Hannah, just do what I just speak extemporaneously. Make it a little mini segment about whatever topic you're given, okay? Yes. All right. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Are you excited? I'm so excited. Oh you also God. use the word extemporaneously, and you use it every time we're talking about this uh, segment, so it makes me really happy. Oh, it makes you happy? Yeah. I know it's one of your favorite words. Yep. Are you ready? 
Yes. Here we go. Your first topic is Ron DeSantis flying immigrants to Martha's Vineyard. <clears throat> I feel very conflicted on uh, this move because I think it was an amazing move to show the hypocrisy of the left and how they seem to care about people until those until those people are in their backyard. But on the other hand, if, you know, he could afford to fly, not afford, but, you know, if he was able to fly them to Martha's Vineyard, why couldn't he have flown them somewhere else? But uh, overall, my first initial reaction was like, wow, that's a ballsy move. And I love it. It really showed them. And I thought it was super cool, just like um, when Abbott... Can I finish that thought? Yeah, you finish that thought. Abbott uh, got the people to Kamala's house. All right, so you're conflicted about Big Daddy D yeah. flying the uh, the email. All right, that's good. It was very good, though. It was a good 30 seconds. But I love him, so like. Yeah, so he can really do no wrong. Truth. So even if he was bad, he was kind of. He, he was, was kind he of was, good. He, he can get away with it. He was naughty, but you liked it, is what <laughs> yeah. you're saying. Yeah, okay. All right, here we go. Here's the next one. Yeah. It's creepy. Uh, Joe Biden declaring the pandemic is over. Joe Biden declaring the pandemic is over. Go ahead. Okay. First of all, I want to say Joe Biden on 60 Minutes was absolutely insane. Uh, second of all, Joe Biden declaring that the pandemic is over. He is just like a walking contradiction. Like one day he'll say it's over. One day he'll say that the unvaccinated, this is the uh, pandemic of the unvaccinated. Yet he is vaccinated and has now gotten COVID twice. And like everyone that I've known has gotten COVID and those who are vaccinated, those are who are not vaccinated. Um, so him saying the pandemic is over. Do we really believe him? Do we not? Did it ever really exist? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Interesting question there. Can something that maybe never even existed actually be over? Yeah. Did it even begin in the first place? Exactly. I like you. You left us with a question so we can ponder it more on our mm -hmm. own time. That was mm -hmm. very good. All right. Uh, this is gonna hear you. Oh, this will be a fun one. Ready? Uh, is this going to be one of those ones where I have nothing to say about it? I don't know. Okay. We're, we're, we're about to find out. All right. Adam Levine's alleged affair with an Instagram model while his Wait, wife was pregnant. I have a question. On your mark. <laughs> K-show. Get, Get set. set. Go. Is Adam Levine the Maroon 5 guy? <laughs> okay. Adam Levine having an affair with an Instagram model while his wife is pregnant. You just repeated what no, I said. No, that's the, correct, well, right? I killed 50 okay. times. Okay. Running. You're welcome. Um, I, <laughs> you know what? He's Who not, thanked you? He's not treating his wife like Sunday morning. I'll say that. Uh, he has a song called Sunday Morning. No, I got the Yeah. Got the anyway, um, he's a piece of poop, and, and she should get a better man. That's all I'm saying. The, the wife, not the Instagram model. She's a piece of trash, too. I mean, technically, they could both probably do with a better man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's alleged, by the way. He says he didn't do anything. Oh. He said he, he crossed a line, but he didn't have... Anyway, you can dig up. You can go to TMZ later. Either way. Uh, one more. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. Uh, you have 30 seconds to speak about TikTok trends. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so my husband made me delete TikTok because he doesn't want China spying on us, first and foremost. But second of all, I just looked at an article of 23 TikTok trends, and they are the dumbest things. And really, it is, it's crazy. It's selection of, uh, or survival of the fittest because these people are dumb. There's like curb stomping. There was like lick an airplane toilet seat. There was, um, did I say the school crushing one already? Yeah, there was the Tide Pod one. Then there was the NyQuil chicken, which the guy in the video said he was getting, like, tired from the fumes. I think these people deserve what they have coming from doing these TikTok trends. It was very good. That was a very good round, and I give you a B- minus on those. Thanks. Maybe a B. Okay. Yeah, a quick break. We'll be right back. Good job. Oh, that was very good. TikTok very good. trends. Oh, someone wrote on mute now. Okay. NBC reported that John Fetterman said he heard what sounded like gunfire and saw a man running away, so he reacted by getting his kid inside to safety before he called 911. What Fetterman did next, however, still haunts him nine years later as he cam campaigns for the Democratic nomination for the Senate in Pennsylvania. He chased the man down with a shotgun and detained him until police arrived. Wait, Fetterman... Yeah, ch okay. chased down this guy. It turned out that the man was jogging and wearing running clothes. According to a police report, the man was unarmed and said the sound of gunfire was actually fireworks, although two witnesses thought they heard shots. The man Fetterman pulled a gun on is black. Fetterman, the mayor of the Pittsburgh area borough of Braddock at the time, and now the state's lieutenant governor, governor is white. Fetterman, 52, said he couldn't tell the jogger's race initially because of how he was bundled up in the winter cold. Why would he do that? Well, the tattoo that he used to show off proudly on his arm might be a clue why.
<gasps> before he covered it up with a thick black box. I was right. The <laughs> tattoo read, I will make you hurt. Hmm. Ooh, I don't like that. Can't you just get it removed? Do you need to cover nice. it up with a big black box? I think it's cheaper to just get it covered up with a big black box. Oh, I guess you're right. That's wild. So there you go. Hmm. Thank you for finding that. Yeah. Good job, Jay. Investigative reporting at its mediocre. Yeah, that was wild. Good job. He has the zip code of Braddock, Pennsylvania, tattooed, tattooed on his left arm. Oh, is that what that is? His right arm has the dates tattooed of the nine people killed through violence while he served as mayor. Every death was heartbreaking. Hmm. They're very messy, sloppy tattoos. His tat Fetterman's? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Kathleen Peters just said, FBI did it again. James O'Keefe, who is suing Washington Post for defamation of character, was raided by FBI at his apartment. Hmm. Hmm. And Washington Post showed up there second seconds afterwards. Of course. Rachel, <laughs> did you read what you read? <clears throat> Are these people still holding? Yeah. All right, we'll grab some calls here. What's Michael saying? Kings in Africa is most... Okay. Uh, Joel, oh, whammy. Okay, good. Whammy. All right, make yeah. sure everyone's still there. We'll talk to him in a minute. <clears throat> Sorry for not knowing who Adam Levine was at the, at the start. There's like, there's another one. Who was the one on American Idol? Adam Lambert. Adam, the, he was a contestant. Yeah. Talking about judges? No, a contestant. Adam Lambert was a contestant on American Idol. Okay. Is there? Are there two Adam Levines? I there's don't, just one, right? I don't know. Okay. I think only. I mean, there's probably multiple Adam Levines. Well, I mean, like famous. I mean, the one that I know of. Okay. Yeah, but Great. I don't know every famous person. Well, my bad. <laughs> you ever? Do you follow the tweet of God? No. There's this guy, his name's God, and he just tweets stuff. I feel like that's uh, a little sacrilegious, it's but funny. okay. He retweeted the Don't Cook Chicken in NyQuil. Oh, no. And he just wrote, that's it, bye. <laughs> oh, man. He's so funny. <laughs> Is it just God? Like that's Yeah, God, but it's at the tweet of God. But the, his username, his name's God. His username is God. Yeah. People. Oh, he's not verified. Well, no, they haven't verified that it is God. Right. That is true. But he has 6.2 million followers. Got right. it, got it, got it. The right does evil well. The left does good poorly. Hmm. I don't know about that. Orgasms are my way of apologizing for everything else. <laughs> Uh, the Bible is 100% accurate, especially when thrown at close range. Hannah, are you talking about Rachel Levine? I was not. No. Oh, Rachel Levine is different than Adam. Rachel Levine, Levine is a man, right? Are you thinking about, are you talking about Harvey Levine? No. Oh, Harvey Weinstein? I don't know. But Rachel Levine is the... Harvey the Rabbit? <laughs> the one that won like Woman of the Year, but is not a woman. Okay, got God it. God tweeted, well, I don't believe in you either. Oh, that's funny. Mm, Florida Renegade, I agree. Avril Lavigne. Oh, no, I wasn't thinking about Avril Lavigne. Oh, you were thinking of Avril Lavigne. No, I She love... wasn't on The View. I, I know Avril Lavigne. Yeah. You know Avril Lavigne? No, I mean, like, I know of her. Oh, I like, can you get her on the show? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Libby, I think it's okay. <laughs> Hannah, Libby goes, Hannah, it sounds like your husband is paranoid. Don't sell your clothes. Now taking off TikTok. What's next? Going to tell you how how to dress, who to or what to wear, and who to talk to? Guys, I mean, if I would have said I'm keeping TikTok, you'd have been like, okay. But... 
I was like, yeah, you're probably right. He's like, just watch YouTube shorts. And I was like, YouTube's no better, but okay. Um, um, I feel like Avril Lavigne hasn't made music in forever. Also, did you... After ever, Skater Boy, there was no reason to make said, music. She said, see you later, amazed. boys. It was, that was the <laughs> pinnacle of her career. She probably realized and said, I'm done now. Uh, have you heard the theory Skater that Boy, she's been replaced? Skater Boy, SK8. TR. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Thanks so much for joining us today, folks. We're so excited that you're here. Uh, we do have some American Trivia Warrior coming up here in just a minute. But first, let's grab a couple phone calls. People have been waiting very patiently. Michael is in Jacksonville, Florida, tuned in to, to uh, WOKV. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Oh, doing great, man. What's up? What What'd you want to say today, Michael? Okay. So first, I do want to tell you that, that your show is flat out amazing. You're the funniest guy. Um, Herman Cain's wife was correct about you when she said this guy's funny. Michael, I appreciate okay. it. Thank you so much. Uh, um, obviously having said that, though. <laughs> yeah, having said that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you were the, what, what the British lady was saying yeah. earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, okay. So the British and the Irish are not the same people. So to say that the African kings stole their own people is, is a misnomer. Just because they were African doesn't make them the same people, just because they're the same color. You have there in Europe people that are the same color, but they wouldn't say we're the same people. I'm Irish, you're British, yeah. you're Italian, you're French. Okay. Sure. Next, the market drives demand. So if there was no market, these chiefs wouldn't have gathered up these other tribes and brought them to the shore for these ships to come and get them. So it, the, the fault lies with who wants these people more so than, oh, you gathered them up and you put some kind of Does, African hoodoo vex, uh, hex on us to make us buy yeah. But, Michael, does it really, though? I mean, is it really the – is it – because what you're saying then is that it, the drug dealer has absolutely no – uh, recourse or no, um, you know, responsibility for the drug addict being addicted to the drug. If the drug addict wants it, legal or not, moral or not, ethical or not, the drug dealer, he's just going to supply it because it's an issue of supply and demand. Is that what you're saying? Okay, so does the uh, does Bush, the alcohol company, or Jim Beam or Wild Turkey have a responsibility that the alcoholic is an alcoholic? Uh, no, but alcohol, okay. but, so, al but the different, the difference there legal. is the difference there is that alcohol is legal and not necessarily and immoral at, at, the way a lot of time, illegal drugs are. At, right. But at the time, slavery was legal. Sure. But was it moral? So, <laughs> I mean, that, there's a, well, there's a question. No, just, just because somebody's, not. yeah, no, I, I, and Michael, I get not. what you're saying, but just because okay. somebody's willing to come to you and say, Hey, I'll give you all this money if you can round up some tribesmen and sell them to me. It, they have a choice. Yes, we will do that, but, or no, but, we won't. And what this woman saying? There are saying, some people who feel like alcohol is is not moral. Okay, some that's people. that's true. No, and I'll give you that one. But okay. the the fact that, right. the fact of the matter is that this woman, all she was saying was, look. If you want the reparations, go back to where the money started because the first people that got money and rewards were the African tribesmen who rounded up the slaves in the beginning. That's what she was saying. That was the beginning of the economic process. Correct. I, yeah. I understand that. I'm not going to debate that portion of, of the point. But how the point continues on, though, is this. Yeah. Once we were here, let's say America, I don't know much about how it went in Britain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Then we were also breeded in generation after generation. <laughs> you didn't keep going over to the shores. Right. Because that was made illegal. Right. But, but then you just begin to breed over and over and over to continue to keep to keep people in, in, enslaved. Yeah. And 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 to say that, that oh let me put it to you let, let me back up. Yeah, back up. I I was on I was on the a, a committee that helped Changed the names of the schools here in in Duval County. Sure, yeah. And I was 
I sat there through what they call public comment. Mm-hmm. So, because I was the chairperson of this committee, public comment, you don't comment back. Right. And this was the biggest thing that they said why the name of Robert E. Lee should remain the name of the school is because it was the chiefs who sold y'all into slavery, not us. Right. Which made zero, absolutely zero sense to me. What's that got to do with the name of this school? So right. this, this but, argument. No, and I and of, I get the uh, argument, but re- back to what your fault. Yeah, go ahead. Go, oh, no, but what? Because the the question that was originally posed by Donald, I mean, here I'll play it again. Here, this is how right, the, this is right. how the whole thing started. Listen carefully. Then you have the, okay. those who are asking uh, for reparations for colonialism, and they're wondering, you know, a hundred billion dollars, twenty four billion dollars here and there, five hundred million there. Some people want to be paid back, and uh, and members of the public are wondering why are we suffering when you are. You know, you have all of this vast wealth. Those are legitimate concerns. Right, and they want to be paid back from the British. And she's saying the British isn't where the money was originally spent. The British are, the money was spent in Africa. And a lot of British never owned slaves. A lot of British lost their lives and their livelihoods fighting against slavery, as did Americans. There were abolitionists who signed the Declaration of Independence. There were abolitionists who argued that the Constitution should outlaw slavery. In the Civil War, you had so many hundreds of thousands of, of of, uh, troops for the Union die to end slavery, yet they're not getting reparations. They're not arguing that they should get reparations either. And that was her point, I think, with the British who lost their lives as well. And it is an interesting discussion. Where does the money come from? Who's responsible? It's not black and white, I think, is what is what the point right. is. There's a whole bunch of people that, that, that started an industry that was deplorable, but is there anything exactly. any of us should demand from any of them now, or should we just yeah. kind of move on? Let me say one last thing. Yeah. I do appreciate you not hanging up on me and allowing me and you to have this discussion. Because by now, Sean Hannity would have hung up on me because he couldn't hang. (laughs) That is so true. uh, Literally, he has hung up on me before. Oh, has he? Because. Yes, because he could not <laughs> hang with my argument. Yeah, he he, he went on about how uh, just one instance, real quick. Yeah, uh, some <laughs> some black rapper should be nobody should listen to him because he's friends with the racist. So I called the show and said, "Why do you keep having Mark Furman on your show?" <laughs> Michael, he, I, oh, sorry, Mike. Oh, I didn't even hang up. You were there. Go ahead. Because he's friends with the racist, and he was like, "Well, boom, just hung up." Yeah. Uh, so. Anyway, Michael, listen, anyway, I pre- Mark Furman I- hasn't been on his show. Thank you very much, Mr. Mark K. I appreciate it. Well, Michael, I appreciate I you, love, too. I do love your show. Well, thanks, I man. I really do. Uh, listen, I will talk to any – I'm first of all, I don't have as many listeners as Hannity, so I got to I gotta talk to everybody that I possibly can. And we do appreciate you tuning in, and thanks so much. And, uh, and you know, if I didn't take your call, Herman's wife would have called me and she'd have yelled. She's like, why didn't you talk to Michael from Jacksonville? What's wrong with you? 855-940-MARK is our number, 855-940-6275. This is Jerry in Jacksonville, Florida. What's up, Jerry? How are you? Hey, Mike. Mark, good. Oh, good. What's going on, uh, Jen- Jenny? Jerry? No, Jerry. I'm trying to uh, make some money with all these uh, uh, reports that I heard that somebody within Jacksonville got to know the phone company that all these migrants are getting their phone from. They're free phones, yeah. Yeah, they're free phones. You know, they said that 70 flights have hit Jacksonville. Um, You know, if there's 4 million people that come here and got a free Biden phone, what is the company? You know, AT&T, T-Mobile, I want to know. Does anybody out there know what the company is so we can make some money on it? Because you want to inv- you want what to buy is- their stock. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, mate, look, it makes for a good, it's a good it's a good question. I don't know which company got the government contract for the cell phones, but I do know as I was watching the video footage of the the uh, Martha's Vineyard fifty, the uh, the migrants that were put on the illegal immigrants, they were put on the boat, they were taken across out oh far away from Martha's Vineyard. First, they put them on a bus, they took the bus to the boat, the boat was taking them to uh, the you know the Cape Cod Naval Station or whatever it was, and they were so happy. Pardon me, they were being interviewed, they were on their phones taking selfies. And I just thought to myself, are these the government issued phones that they were given? Uh, because we'd heard the, you know, Jen Psaki, she actually, she actually verified, yes, there are phones being given out to illegal immigrants, and they are being given out to illegal immigrants so that we can quote unquote track them. All right, so you can track them with this phone, but guess what? They're also taking selfies on the boat in Massachusetts. Are they sending them to somebody? Are they sending text messages back home internationally? 
you know, I've made international phone calls. I've texted internationally. It's not cheap. It's expensive, and somebody's picking up the tab for it. Is it you? Is it me? Well, if it is, we should at least be able to know which phones are being used, which companies are being used, so that we can invest and maybe get some of our money back in the way of dividends. I think that's a genius idea. I think that's a genius idea, Jerry. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have my, I'm gonna have my crack team of investigators dig into that and see if they can find out. Different than hair, than the normal crack. Different, no, not the crack is whack kind. Just, yeah, you know, not you, like Hunter Biden. Yeah, it Hannah, looks like it looks like it might be Safe Link. SafeLink. SafeLink Wireless is a government-supported program that provides free cell phone service each month for income-eligible customers. So it might be them. It might be them. Maybe. They are out of New York. I don't know. We're going to find out. We're gonna, listen, crack investigators, get in it. Get on it. Get in it. Get in it. Get on it. Get around it. Get it, Get it, uh, behind it and figure it out. 855-940-MARK is our number. You all right? Yeah. What's wrong? Nothing. You just made a really loud noise. I didn't. You Wait, did? I did? You, just, you I don't remember just going, True story. Oh. I made that noise. Did you not think you made that noise? I made like, like my eyeballs really big. And then you went, oh. Yep. Did I? Yep. You don't remember just now making a really Sometimes loud noise? Sometimes I think things happen like in only my head and then they happen out loud and I don't. Can we get a playback? <laughs> Did that really happen? Jay, yeah. do me a favor. Pull, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> we're going to pull that audio so that Hannah can remember the thing that she did that she didn't know she just did. Uh, plus, American <laughs> Trivia Warrior. It's all next. Stay tuned to the Marcation. We will be right back. Wait, did that really oh happen? Did I really make? No. Can I? Where can I pull that from? Can I pull that from? YouTube. Can't you rewind it on? Um, YouTube. Can't you rewind it on Rumble now too? Well, yeah, but oh I yeah, go, you can on Rumble as I well. I gotta go to this computer though because I have to. Uh, oh, there it is. Did you have it? Yeah. Can you pull it for me? Yikes! I'm sorry, y'all. That's good. Just pull it and send it real quick. Whatever you can get. <laughs> What's happening? They're funny. they're all saying I did, and I. You don't remember making that noise just seconds Not ago. Not at all. Are you sure? I'm positive. Why did you think I looked at you? Because I like I slammed my hand on the desk, and, and like went, I, oh. I went like that with my eyes, but I didn't think I made a noise. All right, Jay's gonna send it here. I am going crazy. Going? I am crazy. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> I am so sorry, everyone. <laughs> that is too funny. You sounded like Tony Soprano. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I'm so sorry. That is too, too funny. Do you ever do things, though, and not realize you do them? No, I realize everything that I'm doing at all times. What? Yeah. No. It's true. True all story. Right. I'm fully aware. True story, of, bro. Fully aware. So of I can't I can't uh, record it right now, but I've got okay. it right here. Hold on. I got, oh, you do have it right there? Yeah. Hold on. Let me. Where? What, what time was it? Everyone's saying it did it. Oh, no. I'll find it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How crazy are you? Very. Here you go. Investigators, get on it. What am I hearing? That was me. Sorry. Oh, Jay has it pulled get up. It, get on it. Get around it. Get it. Get it oh. uh, behind it, and figure it out. Eight five five nine four. I sure Mark did. Is number, right? yeah. What's wrong? Uh, you just made a right, thousand. Yeah, what you should do is you should go down to Mexico and you should start handing out Donald Trump yeah, T-shirts. Damon's right. Damon Joe says, Biden. see what you guys did. You broke Hannah's internal dialogue. <laughs> All right, pull it. Pot that back up. Or, uh, <laughs> cue that back up, Jay. Oh my goodness. That's funny. I think I need to go uh, somewhere. <laughs> Bro, I, that's probably true. I think you need to go somewhere. Yikes. So sorry. So you want me to just have it pulled up and ready yeah, to play? Yeah, just have it ready to go. Got it. Suzanne says, wow, Mark seems like he can barely tolerate Hannah. Who said that? Uh, Suzanne. Oh, my God. I tolerate Hannah more than better than anybody. True. Very true. Hannah, you make it. Thanks, Kathy. Preach. Hannah's brain fart. Yeah, that's 100% what happened. One day I want to be as, one day I want to be as happy as Martha's Vineyard residents kicking illegal immigrants <laughs> off. There. I'm sorry. That's so funny. I have a trivia pulled up though. Do you? I do indeed. We're going to do some American trivia warrior. Yay! Yay! Sorry, Jay. For what? You're such a bully. <laughs> You're making noise again. Do you know that? Yeah, that oh, one okay. I, I was aware of. Just double checking. Just making sure. Uh, Jeff Seabox says, remember remember Mar-a-Lago? Remember <sighs> Hannah's outburst. <sighs> Yikes. Casey Soup says, Hannah, you're too young to forget like that. Uh, maybe I have early onset dementia. 
or maybe it was like just like a blip, you know, a very short blip. Do you have that uh, hundred dollars that you said you were gonna let me borrow? Sure, didn't forget that. Uh, I did not. By say the way, that. Hannah, when are you coming over to clean my fireplace like you said you were gonna do? You would never let anyone inside your house. <laughs> I mean, if they were there to clean my fireplace. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. I'm questioning everything I know. You really should. Hmm. Yeah. Imagine the things you say that you don't remember you saying. Mm, that's true. Casey will be like, yeah, and then you said that to me, and I'll be like, what? I was like, that's so mean. That's not me. 100% I did. Barnacle, that was great. Hannah, it's brain frog f- fog from only eating protein. No, I. this is the first time it's happened. It is not pregnancy brain. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Another person. Didn't you ask your husband for a pregnancy test? Like that? Jokingly. Oh. Did Just because I one cried one? three days in a row. No. <laughs> I know I had, when he got home, I was like, I was going to ask you to bring home a pregnancy test because I cried three days in a row, but I think I'm just being emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Just a guy in Bay City says, that crank in shards will do that to a person. <laughs> Five seconds. Great. Perfect. I'm so excited about trivia. Okay, show. My name is Mark K. Eight five five nine four zero. Merck is my number. Merck. Well, that's how Hannah says it because she's from Washington. I uh, see it, Mark. M- moments ago, ladies, before we get to the American Trivia Warrior, moments ago we got a little we got a little worried about Hannah. I actually <laughs> thought maybe we need to call like the, a doctor or something. Uh, but basically, what happened is Hannah was we were talking about something where we were actually wrapping up. I was giving the phone number yeah. so that I don't know why. I mean, we're not, you don't call in for American Trivia Warrior. Just force of habit, if you will. And uh, Hannah made she had an outburst. And when I looked at her and said, what's wrong? She goes, nothing. And I said, well, you just made a noise. And she said, no, I didn't. I was so convinced I and hadn't I said, made a noise. Yeah, you did. She goes, no, my, eye, I just, my eyes opened wide. I, was, I said, no, you made an, an uh, audible noise. And everybody listening and watching on the stream verified the yeah. information. Jay, do you have that here? I do. All right, listen, Anna, listen carefully. This is exactly <laughs> what happened moments ago. Okay. Kind, just, yeah, you not know, like Hunter Biden. Yeah, it, Hannah, looks like, it looks like it might be safe link. SafeLink. Oh. SafeLink Wireless is a government-supported program that provides free cell phone service each month for income-eligible customers. So it might be them. It might be them. Maybe. They are out of New York. I don't know. We're going to find out. We're gonna, listen, crack investigators, get in it. Get on it. Get in it. Get in it. Get on it. Get around it. Get it, Get it, uh, oh. behind it and figure it out. Eight. There was. Oh, maybe it's because, like, you were making sexual jokes, and I was like, oh. I wasn't making sexual nope. jokes, number one. And didn't number happen. two, that doesn't matter because you made the noise and claimed you didn't make the noise. I just didn't think it. You weren't listening to yourself. Somebody's got to listen to you when you talk. Okay? It's not me. If you're not. <laughs> if I, Jay, <laughs> it's your job. Uh, in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for American Trivia Warrior. This is very exciting. We have a, uh, we have a very fancy trophy so given to us. Fancy. By one of our Catriots. Current week's American Trivia Warrior is what it says on the front. It's got those stars and the bars, the big gold uh, cup. It's got the big ruby red, whatever you call it, in the middle. It's really elegant. And on the bottom, uh, we have a running tally as to who's won how many different. I won't go through that now, but just just so you know, the winner gets to uh, put a hash mark on the bottom and keep the trophy on his or his desk for the next week. Hannah, at one of her multiple jobs, uh, comes up with trivia questions every week. We go back and forth. Basically, it's the first person to answer correctly gets the point. Whoever has the most points at the end wins. Jay, you ready? Yep. Hannah, are you ready? Yeah. (laughs) Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm going crazy from all these jobs. You gotta be worried about what you're saying that you don't remember. I know. That's what I'm concerned. You know what? We gotta start. Okay. First uh, trivia question, please. Here we go. In this very popular nursery rhyme, three of which creatures... mice. Yeah. I'm sorry. The answer is mice. Well... I... (laughs) Seriously. You got it right. Uh, An insomniac struggles to do what? 
That was a tie. That was. I'm sorry. Uh, the Beatles were formed in which... Liverpool. That's correct. Mm. Yo. Which composer had the Christian names Johann Sebastian? Bach. That is correct. Which long-haired cow-like animal is often kept by people living in the Himalayas? Alpaca. No. Llama. No. Cow-like. Uh, yak. Oh. Did you know you made that noise or did you just go, yak? <laughs> did I make it? I'm just kidding. Okay. All right, so Wait. nobody gets a point. No. Jay, how many points do you have? One. Oh, okay. Which direction is also the name of one of Kim Kardashian's? North. North. Yeah. Uh, 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 did you try to take that? What? I, what? He said it first. What? No, he did not. Yeah. Yes, he did. You're hearing things uh, again. No, I'm not. Do you need to play back? Replay that. You said north? He yeah. said north, and he said it way before you. I didn't even like hear Like a him. solid second. I guess I stopped listening to everybody. <laughs> Goodness. Right. Okay. Wait, so he got a point for that? Yeah, he yep. got a point, and you did not. All right. Wait, was north the right answer? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Right. And I would have accepted west as well, because west is all of the kids' last names. Anyway, uh, golden, sea, and bald are all- Eagle. Sp- yep. Mm. If you were using a spinnaker or a jib, what would you be doing? Sailing. That is correct. Is it? Whew. Okay. Uh, which famous Spanish painter was born in 1881? Salvador oh. Dali. No. No, the other guy. It was uh, Pizarro. <laughs> Who? Pizarro. Pablo Picasso. No, Picasso. That was <laughs> very awesome. All right. John Steinbeck wrote a novel about... Of mice and men. Being east of which place? Oh. Oops. East of, I don't know. Eden. It's Eden. Yeah. Uh, it. All right. In what decade did bubble cars make their first appearance? Bubble car. What? Bubble cars. The 1970s. Nope. 60s. 50s. Next question. Uh, and, <laughs> excuse you. Sorry. Anne Frank hid in an attic in which Austria. city oh. in the Second uh, World War? City. It was in the. In I should know this. The place. Fault in Our Stars, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Uh, approximately uh, how many kilometers is in a full marathon? Five thousand. No, I don't. I have no idea. What? Yeah, that's that's way low. That's <laughs> kilometer. Way low. Wait, way low. Kilo- that's wait, way that's high. Way high. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. It's it's, on, it's twenty six miles. It's approximately a uh, hundred. No, 42.2. So if you said 42, I would have given it to you. In what year did Pepsi Cola, you know, in what decade did Pepsi Cola first introduce Diet Pepsi to the public? 1950. Nope. 50s. Nope. 80s. 60s. Next question. Uh, Who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin? Oh, what's his name? Uh, that guy. Uh, uh, it was uh, that guy. Washington Irving. No. no. Oh, uh, I don't know. Harriet Carrot. Beecher Stowe. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, I definitely didn't know. That girl. Sa- I know. I was like, that guy. You know, Harriet Sa- Beecher Stowe. That's what I meant. Sarah Burton, who designed Kate Middleton's wedding dress, worked for which luxury fashion house? Gucci. No. It's not Burberry either. Burberry. <laughs> Is that your answer? Sure. <laughs> Alexander McQueen. Yeah. Like, I would have known that. Oh, okay. One more question. The World Trade, Trade Organization was founded in 1995 in which European city? Uh, in Davos. No. Jay? Vienna. Geneva. Yeah. All right. Horrible questions. Oh, my gosh. But how many did you get, Jay? Two. All right, so I win. Hey, everyone, we'll see you tomorrow. Stop hating on my trivia questions. I don't know. I just just don't think you're giving your best effort. All these decade questions, that's a cop-out question. That's not... In which decade this, in which decade that? I don't know. It just seemed like a cop-out to me. That's a, a cop-out to what? I could have asked you the specific year. The of mice and men question was good because I thought it was one thing, but then it turned out to be something else. Eden. Yeah, East of Eden. Wait, I have two more questions. Oh, all right, good. Let's two more questions. Here we go. Speedy Gonzalez is what kind of cartoon Mouse. creature? Yeah. Yes. And then the Shakespeare play Romeo and Juliet is set in which city? Verona. Yes. See, those are good questions. Well, you didn't let me more get More of those. Guys. More questions about cartoons and Shakespeare. Goodness. Relevant things. Guys, great job today. Great show.